<laughs> got a draft link. Indeed. Currently, it is Nazibo ban for El Nexo, Abafa ban for Well Met, Brightwing pick for El Nexo, Tyker's pick for Well Met, and they have 30 seconds to pick their second pick. What the heck happened? Nazibo? <laughs> like I said, <laughs> uh, El Nexo are going very NA style, but Well Met, they're going to be taking up Chen, stealing that away from El Nexo. Chen, by far considered one of the most powerful warriors in the game right now, is incredibly good. Uh, indeed, very much so. I mean, with his uh, with his pandas, uh, with his heroic, he can just sustain every fight and just stay in there. Go for um, yeah, go for the hunt on different heroes. Yeah. I'm, assume, or, I'm assuming you brought up the draft screen now. Yeah, I did. And um, I like the Abathur ban uh, by Wellmet. Does make a lot of sense. Uh, Vortex Agreed. is a really strong Abathur player. So it, it is a good choice. Good choice by Wellmet. I would agree. So we're now on to El Nexo, and they're going to bring out Valor once again. Very much the new meta style of play. And Felsad, two of the squishiest assassins, if you don't include Jada and maybe Nova, but very, very high damage. And currently, this team from El Nexo, very high damage and very high escape. They have very good engage and disengage. By the way, which map are we playing on? Do we know yet? I haven't got the foggiest. So I don't know either. Um, well, I mean, I think Felset is always a sol solid choice. But going for the double um, double mobility with Felset and Brightwing um, does help on, on these really large maps even more so. Yeah, like uh, Cursed Hollow I'd expect to be quite likely for this. That or Dragonshire. Stuff with quite high amounts of mercs. It does work on, on uh, Garden of Terror, but it's more you see it more often on maps like the Cursed Hollow. Now, I would expect to um, for Wilmette to just wait for the support pick for later on, and instead yeah, go for the warriors to. right now, or go for maybe one more warrior and then an assassin. And they're going stitches. for Stitches. Yep, I like the Stitches pick, very nice, which uh, I'm trying to think, yeah, this is still, uh, still quite good for Cursed Hollow. So I've, I'm thinking the map will be Cursed Hollow, which now we're just trying to metagame what map they're picking by their picks. <laughs> but yeah, Stitches, once again, very, very nice here. Maybe not considered as good of an assassin as Arthas by quite a lot of the pros, but with a pick comp and such squishy characters like uh, Falstead and Valor, who have very decent escape, just chasing them down isn't really going to cut it because they're going to yeah. dash away, they're going to pull some fancy moves, which is why Stitches is such a nice pick, because you can root with Chen, make, force them to pump their escapes out, and then hook, or vice versa. They hook, You hook, they dash away, and then Chen kicks. You time it well, and you're, you're going to be able to catch them out after they've used all their escapes, and they will go down, which is this yeah. is a very nice set of pickups for them. Uh, really nice chase abilities for Wilmette so far. Um, let's see what they're going to do for, um, for more damage output. Um, yeah, I'd, need like a second to assassin. I'd like to see... Uh, ooh, Sergeant Hammer! There what? we go. Okay. She's been coming into the meta in a huge way recently. And it's very nice to see her again. I'm a huge fan of seeing Hammer. Maybe not incredible against the comp of El Nexo. Due to the fact that there's a huge amount of gap closing, which can really get people in Hammer's face and force her to DC uh, boat. But mm. there's a a lot of front line like Tychus himself as an assassin is a pretty decent front line for Hammer and with the help of Chen and Stitches he's actually going to be fairly well protected it's just a question of how easily El Nexo will be able to either break through the front line or just dash straight past it to take out Hammer so Hammer is definitely a threat that needs to be dealt with here um, let's see what they going what their uh, warrior choice is going to be here maybe a Nubarak to just close that gap but he's kind of gone out of fashion, but maybe in the last few weeks, I don't know, did, did, you, did you watch a lot of games? Uh, the last few weeks I took an unofficial vacation because both you and Technolink were away, so <laughs> I used that as a... I didn't have anyone to stream uh, the games, so I didn't really cast myself, so I took that as a break from uh, esports in general and just played the game. Oh, that makes sense. Yes, it was fun. I now have five characters to level 10. It was a good time. Oh, not bad. <laughs> Productive holidays, I see. It was. It was good. And Ufa is the final pickup for Well Met. Final pickups are on Nexo, Arthas, and Zeratul. 
Uh, it's gonna be tricky for Uther to get in there and get his Divine Hurricane off, but... This is true. They're like, all of these characters have escape, and I'd like to put that Zeratul is taking the place of a second warrior in this comp. Mm -hmm. Which is interesting, to say the least. Yeah, I mean, uh, let's see. I mean, it looks like they could have an easy time early on, but... But then again, we have Stitches and Sergeant Hammers early on, um, also a strong hero, so... I don't know. Well, we'll have to see uh, once it gets into the game. Do we have the lobby set up yet? We do uh, not. I'm going to join it and then I'm going to disappear for a second during loading screen. I'll be back before the game starts easily. Sure thing. Uh, I'll wait for a lobby to get up so I can actually get into it first. So um, you talked about Hammer and having her in Siege Mode, but didn't you tell me before that you usually don't see Hammer in Siege Mode all that much? Yes, in le uh, when you're in team fights, though, if you can get Hammer in Siege Mode, the splash damage really does add up, and mm -hmm. it is a huge advantage. But you'll most likely not see Sergeant Hammer in Siege Mode, especially during the laning phase, unless we see what Hammers have been doing recently, which is we'll likely see Stitches and Ufa in the lane with Hammer. And they will literally just protect her for uh, with their lives and get the siege damage done as much as possible. They'll likely be pushing either bot lane or their golem lane, whichever one that turns out to be. Mm -hmm. And just get as much damage done as possible so the golem will uh, push better. But like you said, if she's on her own or her teammates abandon her, she'll be staying out of siege mode. Because yes, you get to boost and that will instantly de-siege you. But it's still very difficult to escape when you are a sergeant hammer. Lobby is up. I am joining... Join off me or join off no me or whatever. Yep. Done. Well, they, need to swap, they need to swap us quick. Okay, they swap me, swap Hiroke okay in, swap you out. Nice. Yep. All right, I'll disappear. I'll be back before the game starts. BRB. Awesome. And the map is Garden of Terror. So on Garden of Terror, um, I mean, Tetris said it that mobility is not as crucial, but I think, I mean, it's a pretty huge map. So I do like it quite a bit. Um, can come in handy if you're going for the grab and just quickly want to just tag those um, Siege Giant camps or um, the Bruiser camps, something like that. But um, yeah, we'll have to see how El Nexo's composition works out here. It's a little bit more squishy uh, since they only have one warrior. But then again... Um, well, Matt is playing a little bit of a, of a different setup uh, as well, so uh, they have only one damage dealer, so I, th I think, or maybe Sergeant Hammer, of course, uh, does help out quite a bit there as well. But uh, I gotta say, we have to see how the um, how these kind of different uh, team compositions actually played out play out against each other. All right, so uh, looks like the players are about ready. Uh, everyone's in there. We have all the heroes being picked. So uh, I, th I think we're about ready to go. I am back. Awesome. Yeah, I think everyone's about ready. Yep, 6 out of 10 people have readied up. So we'll be getting into the game as soon as possible. Hopefully. Mm-hmm. So it's going to be a Garden of Terror, not Cursed Hollow, as, as we thought about... Uh, Okay, still That's quite a big, still quite a big map, pretty decent pushing potential. This is, de uh, but I will say, well, Bet's comp is definitely one you'd more likely see on maybe Cursed Hollow. Mhm. Mm still like it though. Still looks good. The, pro the like the biggest problem with this map for their comp is it's much longer than the majority of the other maps, meaning that once you have, ha if you're winning, and you can get hammered within pushing distance of a keep. Hammer's going to be able to dash away from that keep, but then once her dash is done, once her rocket boost is finished up, she's still going to have like, she's still only going to be like halfway back to her fort. Yep. Giving the enemy yeah. team time to catch up. I think that's one of the biggest issues here for where I'm at. Uh, it's just their lack of mobility. And since it is such a big map, if they, I mean, if, if they're like one or two levels ahead and just straight on pushing all the way through, I think they're going to be okay. But the thing is, if uh, if El Nexo just um, plays like they usually do and gets um, yeah gets some decent teams fights out of it, uh, gets a little bit of an XP advantage, I think they're in a better spot. Like as far as um, equal levels goes, this is true. Like like you point like you pointed out, El Nexo is basically the opposite 
of WellMet's team in terms of huge amounts of mobility and relatively com or comparatively little tankiness. Mm -hmm. It's mobility and damage for El Nexo versus a slow methodical push. A slow <laughs> methodical just attrition via WellMet. <laughs> exactly. It kind of like siege tanks um, going, going up on front. It's mech versus bio. The... Yeah, yeah it <laughs> it's, is. What, it's what we're seeing here. It is. Um, so I think it's going to come down to Nomi on Stitches playing like the game of his life. He needs to he needs to land hooks and he he is the initiator. He needs to hit his skill shots, but it's going to be down to his team timing their disrupts and actually following up and getting the kill. They need to have super fast reactions to pick anyone off because Zeratul can blink away, Brightwing can blink away and has a speed boost. Valor has a speed boost uh, if she has her hatred all the way up and can vault away. Falstad can vault away. Arthas is probably just going to run away and survive anyway. They need to lock them down. Yeah. Um, so I think the, the initiation by Nomi is not going to be quite as important. Well, maybe if they can get a really squishy target like Valor or Falstad straight away. But then the second hook is going to be where it's at. And I think this is something we should watch out for. Yep, quite possibly. So apparently Sokke is still AFK. <laughs> Which is why we have yet to start. But second the game is up, we will try and jump into it. <laughs> okay, so yeah. Sokka no, was no usually the... going on. Sokka was... Oh, oh, he just changed his character. He changed his character. He's alive! Eight. We're All alive! Right. Everyone ready up and go? <laughs> no me, just has to orbs. We uh, are so in the second round, and since uh, Raceland is asking, uh, this is best of three now. So we're going into a best of Excellent. three. Excellent. Like we uh, we said this before, when we've uh, cast these uh, two teams. These two teams have a reputation built up in StarCraft 2. So seeing them play each other like this is very, very cool. Yeah, it's basically the old StarCraft pros, pl plus a couple of new players. Duking it out against each other. Yeah, throw Team Comet in there, and we've got <laughs> we've got a good old reunion. Are they still still at it? No, I wish they were. I miss White Ra. Yeah, he should go get into heroes. He should. Maybe with a different team composition or just a little bit more practice. Yeah, still I think. would agree. So we are into game number one of this best of three series. It's round two of the net of the Nexus Chank. Champ history Heroes Premier League qualifier for season two with two and a half K up for grabs. Paul, would you like to introduce the team on the left hand side? Yeah, on the left side, we have our blue team by the name of El Nexo, and we have Alistair in top lane. He's playing Felstad. Vortex is playing Vala. Uh, we have Lucifer and Arthas. Lol vs. XD is playing Zeratul. And in the bot lane, we have Grand PK. And on the right hand side in the red trunks, it is well met. And starting in the top lane on the chain, we have Sokke in the mid lane. It is Hasawobs playing the Tychus. And in the bot lane, as the, in the exact composition I called it, it is Nomi <laughs> on the stitches, Ufa on, sorry, Hiruke on the Ufa, and Hysteria, or Hysterica, sorry, on the hammer. Oh, this is interesting. They're already setting it up and to kind of lure El Nexo in there. Because he set up the spider mines just at the gate. Well, El Nexo have been known to, if they're playing against a hammer, go ridiculously aggressive in the first few minutes to try and pick off that hammer due to the minimal escape. And as we can see, that's exactly what they're doing. Grab oh, nice hook here. Hook, so it's already taking damage, but in comes Lulvus, Lulvus XP and Lucifron. Trying to get anyone. Nomi is the one who's being focused down. Ooh, there's the nice flick. body block on Nomi. Can he take him out? I think yeah, so. Yes, God. there's the final kill. But Lucifer is quite low, so he needs to get back now. Iruka into Sirica. Stay alive for now. Do soak up that XP, but first blood does go to El Nexo. Yep, very, very nice. They're waiting for the hammer, but Hammer was beautifully protected there by Hiruke and his uh, by Hiruke and Stitches, but Stitches did go down. Hiruke taking a lot of damage. He's able to heal himself. And this is very aggressive from El Nexo, but it's doing a fantastic job of driving back this horse and stopping the push that would be coming otherwise. Brightwing, even with the fact they've got a kill and almost got a second kill, is still having trouble clearing the waves. It's only just managed to clear them. And now Lucifer has been caught out of position while trying to steal some seeds here. We're seeing Haruke 
and Hysteria chase him all the way back into their territory. Lover 16 was thinking about joining. Someone died there. Who just died? Oh, it was Valor. Valor. Valor did go down, and Lucifer does look quite low, and he's running straight into he the fort. He has to run into a tower. He's nowhere yeah. to go here. He's just running. There we go. He yeah, but go he just bought himself a little bit of time, and thereby bought his team a little bit of time to get a couple more seeds here. Yeah, so Hasu nice Wops. move, and Hasu up. Oh, he's so he's close. He's so low. There's the grenade. Hiruke coming in with the heal, and Hasu Ops wow. also running into tower range. That's but a clutch timing, Hiruki so coming tower. in here. Really, yeah. really oh, well done. Hysterica coming in from the other side, doing a lot of damage to LOL, but LOL has just jumped away. Hysterica just poking damage and being relatively ignored. Vortex, though, coming in from the back, is going on to Sokke, dealing the damage. Sokke is being dropped very low, thanks to Fasset and Nova. Sorry, and Valor, and they do take it down. Hasuobs is going to be the same fate from Valor, unless Nomi can do a fantastic body block like he just Ooh. did, and just tanked all of that, and was able to slow down Valor enough to allow Hasuobs to escape. Down goes Sergeant Hammer, though. And El Nexo are starting to get control back, but currently, the score is 3-3, three three, but El yeah. Nexo do have an XP lead. Yeah, they have an XP lead, and they also have a little bit of a free roaming lead right now. They can go for the seats and possibly go for um, the top garden terror right now, because we have three players that had to go back to the base, um, either because they were so low on health or taking out of the game completely. And yeah, there they go. Just going straight for the top garden terror, and looks like uh, well met. Trying to gain up here on this bottom lane and go for the siege camp. Yep, they're getting their siege camp, and then they will likely move on to the other terror, uh, Shamba, sorry, <coughs> to try and get some of the seeds of their own. Having a look at the talents, while we're seeing the teams just trying to gather seeds, we can see that Valor has gone for the multi shot build. It is the highest damage build that we are, have seen so far. Alistair dashing away, playing it safe. We can see Alistair and Brightwing have, um, Alistair and Grand PKT have gone for the bribe builds and the damage in terms of Envenom and Gathering Power, but now El Nexo have the level advantage there going in. Oh, Alistair nice is Nice body block here on Hiruke. Down. Hiruke has been Envenomed by Lucifer, and he goes down. Another Envenom coming out there from Brightwing. And now Nomi, also Envenomed, is backing up. He gets healed by Ufa at last second. Ufa goes saving his life there. Down goes Valor, Grand PKT running for his life. Kit comes in. The route is already available from El from well met they're chasing him down in comes oh, Valor and the kick and now Sokka nice has kick. through until he gets his until he gets his kick back up there he goes he kicks out taking a lot of damage Alistair giving chase the tower did the damage but Alistair does not want to get caught out by Hasuobs and Hysterica here and we're seeing well met take a bit of an early lead they've already brought it back into their territory yeah three additional kills and I'd like to point out, Hysterica was in hiding in the bushes the entire time during that fight and putting out the damage. Oh, nice hooky, by the way, on LOL versus XC. He's so close and he's dying. Alright, but Zaka, he needs to get out of that fight, but he can't make it. And that's Shen going down just because he doesn't have his heroic yet, but Alistair is taken out on the other hand. And Vortex, can he get away? Does look like it, but Hasuops just pushed them back with a grenade, and this allows them to get a, grab a lot of seats here in that this bottom engagement. This is the closest one. I've ever seen these two at this point in the game. El Nexo, they have been known to lose in the early game, but this is actually a pretty decent lead for Well Met, and they're actually doing fairly well in terms of the fights in general. A fantastic job keeping up with El Nexo at this point. Yeah, but it, everything is going to change once we hit once we hit that level 10. Shen will get his heroic, um, we'll get the pandas, and then there's also um, the big one, the Void Prison by Zero Tool. I think that's a big, big game changer, and uh, could uh, could change this up, all the team fights at least. This is very possible. We're seeing Sea Giants being taken by both teams at the moment, just trying to get some push going. Grand PKT is still in the bot lane though, gonna be trying to at least slow down Sergeant Hammer. Sergeant Hammer gonna be getting the push, but the red team hero died. Who was yep. that? that was Zeratul was taken out uh, after grabbing the siege camp in top lane. Yep. So they did take him out, uh, did pop off his heroic there, but not gonna matter all that much. Yep, that will be up relatively quickly. And we're going to see the well met taking advantage of this as much as possible, and they're going to push this top lane very, very heavily. I don't think so. They're just going to use this time to grab some mercenaries and then maybe move bot lane, try and catch out hammer and de push any of the lanes that need it. Oh, Lucifer hiding in the bushes there, but uh, looks like he's going to be safe. Maybe waiting out uh, for the timing on the bruiser camp here. Uh, Quite possibly, is he bruiser is going yep. down. He's going. He's in scouting he it out. Right there well. he goes. Straight in there, Nomi is trapped here on the left side, oh, and they will take him out so swiftly, he tried to get away, 
But um, I don't know, for some reason he tried to escape to the left. Uh, possibly just buy Shen a little bit more time. But he did have his heroic up, so I think that was a little bit I don't unnecessary. Think he would have survived, even if he had his heroic yeah. up, he would have still got picked off due to being a 4 versus 1, basically. But we're now seeing Hiruke getting rooted down. He's going to get taken out as well. Almost actually gets stunned. There is the heal on himself, but it's not going to be enough. He goes down. And El Nexo beginning to gain back the control that they like so much. Yeah, it does look like it. Um, I was kind of uh, freaked out by Uther here. Why didn't he go the right way uh, straight into his fort? He could have made it. It Quite didn't possibly. look like it initially, but, but he could have made it. It All is right. an interesting uh, move that he did, but El Nexo capitalizing on it, were able to take him down. Sergeant Hammer playing very well, playing very safe, has backed up to try and get some damage, to, to try and get some uh, avoid getting picked off. He's already pushed his lane up. He does not want to get caught out due to the yeah. El Nexo roaming death squad. Yeah, he caught a little bit of a nice timing there, um, just going for the siege camp, uh, putting a little bit of pressure on the bot lane, but now they need to stay together, they need to stick close, oh possibly God, okay. pick up these... Oh, Zaka, he's in trouble, yeah, that's but that's their pops is ...has trapped the entire rest of uh, well there they're backing up there. there's a shock and awe hits three out of four of them but down goes Hiruke Soke is still trying to come back in but he's being picked off because the rest of well there did back up there they didn't want to take that fight and for good reason very very nice engagement there by El Nexo and they are immediately rotating up instead of going for the nearer terror they're gonna head straight up to the top and try and fight well met where they ran to well met trying to get a terror of their own, but are just going to get interrupted instantly. And they now, once again, have to rotate to the bot lane to yeah. try and get those seeds. This is costing them a lot of time and thereby a lot of seeds. So, um, a nice move by El Nexo once again. Um, is Well met going to go straight for the Garden Terror? Does look like it. Yep. Not going to grab the free the seeds first. Zeratul has grabbed that straight away. He is going to be crushing down this bot lane to get some counter push. Actually, he looks like he's heading for the other Terra. Yeah, he just pings that he is on the way, letting his team know. And well met are going to be able to grab these seeds before Lover 60 gets here, but that's not going to stop Lover 60 forcing them to push back by his sheer presence. And he's going to help his team grab a couple more seeds. They now have another 101 seeds for another Terra once this one is over. There is a Terra now ready for, uh, El ne for well met as well, but El Nexo's is already pushing very hard on this bottom lane. The team's there as well. Brightwing, however, is in the top lane, also doing some counter pushing. Yeah, solid counter pushing here on the top fort. Uh, it's already down to three quarters of its health, and no one's reacting yet. So if Brightwing goes uncontested, that's a lot of, a lot of damage coming in. Yeah, and also a lot of damage coming in on the bot lane. Looks like they will take out this fort as well. Just now, well met is reacting here, bringing out their own Garden Terror. And it's going straight into the fight. Yeah, this is a full team fight. No one is dead. Ufa is getting close, but he's able to divide and storm and keep himself alive. Manages to survive. And we're just seeing an intense fight here. Alistair being forced to back up. He's being chased out, but he's able to dash away. Like we, we did call this one out. But down goes Arthas. He's the first person to die in this fight. Hammer is still in here doing as much damage as she can. Just wrecking the plant terror. Soke comes in to stun it, and it is now cancelled into the curse of the squid into the plant queen's curse. Down goes Zeratul, Wild Curse, not able to blink away. And well met, taking this fight very convincingly. They're going to continue pushing. Jen is still alive in this back here. He has very little health, but he's just chilling. He's getting ready, just in case his team has to retreat and need a stun. But he feels safe now. He's going to be back. And we're going to see well met. Excellent turnaround. Yeah, How excellent turnaround for well met. Um, I was actually kind of surprised that Hiruke stayed in that fight. He was incredibly low, but I think that was the most important decision here for Hiruke to stay in the fight, Chen to stay in the fight, and just stick in there and um, keep uh, just keep the damage going for uh, well met. Yep, this is true, and well met, just pushing so much. Meanwhile, though, we did see Valor and Brightwing head to the top lane, and they were able to grab another fort of their own, bringing their fort lead up a bit. There's three seconds left on this Terra, but that's not going to be enough. They won't take down this mid fort. And now we're seeing Nomi back up. Does reveal Zeratul, but there is another plant Terra on the way for El Nexo. Ooh, Nomi, there's the Gorge of Zeratul. Does he have to and hit? wow, does so much matter? damage coming in. Oh Nomi God. getting hit here by the Shock and Awe, but he does get away, and Ruke pops up a nice, um, a nice Divine Storm. A nice just Divine to Storm stop that the no onslaught. one followed up on, and he got turned into a plant as he ran back to his base. 
And this is proving to be very difficult for Well Met now. They just got their little bit of an advantage. And now they're in serious danger, because not because of Well Met's superior play in that fight, because Well Met lost that fight, but because Well Met set themselves up so well before the fight that they are now in, once again, a hugely good, an incredibly good position because they were already prepared for what happened after the fight. Yeah, very much so. I mean, they knew they had to face another Garden Terror. And, ooh, nice. Oh, nice pull. Oh my god, so much damage with the Blink Heal. Oh, Holy Radiance oh, catches him. Asu up dashes in there. Yeah, Haruke is doing, a, is actually helping his team so much right now. The heals are huge. We can actually have a look at the heal thing with, uh, I'm trying to work out which button it is. Yep, 22,000 from Brightwing, 20,000 from Uva, and Uva has to cast his that costs mana. So yep. we're seeing very, very well played here by Haruke. And well met still has the pressure on. They're actually on the offensive quite nicely here, even though El Nexo has a plant terror doing a very, very nice job here. And we're seeing the Lucifer finally beginning to move up, just trying to get some curses down, trying to give his team a chance, but down is the plant terror. And very well played by El Nexo, really not making much worth out of this. Yeah, but I, I do like the play here for Wermat. Uh, just putting on the aggression. Oh, Hysterica's in trouble. Oh, they're going straight for her, but nope. There comes the Gorgon Arthas. He is taken out of the fight. And Ruki kind of wasting his heroic there. And Socket, can he get out? Yes, he can. This front has also been able to back out Arthas. Just tanking everything. Hysterica does get rooted. There's the shock at all. Hysterica is backing up. Socket has now, is now out of his ult. And right now, the fight is still even. No one has died, but... We do see Wellmet backing up a bit, but the heals are coming out from Ufa are so much. Brightwing is just hanging near her teammates, just trying to get some of the passive heals off. But down goes the four, and that evens up the count. Alistair gets hooked in, takes a bit of damage, but Nomi might die for this. He's going to die to Envenom, and down he goes. And we also saw Chen go down. Both of the warriors do die, and now we're seeing well, well met on the retreat because El Nexo takes it down, but we did see Arthas die as well. Yeah, uh, two warriors down. And then stitches down. Uh, stitches down. So um, yeah, I mean, once once uh, Arthas goes down for El Nexo, they really can't stick in the fights for too long. Uh, the thing was that um, Hammer was still alive here for Wellmat. So by having her in the back of the f um, in the back of the fight, it's kind of dangerous for El Nexo to go go for um, yeah go and stick in the fight. This is true. Well met though. They're just gonna use what they can. <clears throat> what they can and what they have right now. They're going to be taking down the top... They, in fact, they were trying to take down the top chair, but they uh, think El Nexo's waiting. on the way, and they are right. El Nexo on the way to try and uh, contest here, and well met, playing it very, very patiently. They're all hiding. They're backing up a bit. Their team is on the way. Ufa's still here. And <laughs> El Nexo also being very patient. Neither team really choosing to commit there, but there we go. Well met. Committing yeah, exactly but Alexo did take the, their siege okay. camp uh, in top lane, so they didn't waste their time oh, like uh, the well met the ooh, nice hook and there's the gorge, but oh, Nomi he stunned in place. Oh, the bad timing there! The shock at all hits no one except Hysterica, who's just healing up back to his first aid. And huge damage coming out of Hysterica onto this plant terror right now. They're trying to take this while the fight goes on. Hiruke and Sokke are distracting El Nexo. Nomi takes a lot of damage though. Grabbing your team, blinking out just in time to try and stay alive. But Chen turns onto him. Chen and Brightwing both go down. And we're seeing Well Met retreat. Oh, Lucifer is in trouble. Just one more hit there. And he is he taken out. And Lord vs. XD also caught out here um, well, by the stun. Does have his dash, but does go down thanks to Hysterica. They do take it down. And Well Met once again taking another fight. And both teams once again have a plant terror. <laughs> so this fight, this game continuing to be quite even. It's just going back and forth. Yeah, let's see who's gonna um, who's gonna have a little bit of an upper hand here in the late game. Uh, both teams. Nope. Actually, for now, it's just well met going for the Garden Terror. A terror has come to life. Uh, yep, this is true. They're grabbing it. They had less time on theirs, so they had a bit more time to grab it. Whereas uh, El Nexo do have the time to wait for someone like Arthas to respawn and then grab it, which is gonna be nicer for them in the long run. Which is likely what they're going to do. Well, there's 60 right now, just tr staying out on the map, gaining some map control. And there we see Brightwing teleporting into the lane. Arthas is going to respawn. He will probably grab that Terror at the last moment. Nomi is beginning to push forward with his, though, to try and get some more damage done and start harassing that keep. Uh, we have the slam built on Stitches, by the way. And possibly... I just instinctively brought up the talent screen when you said that. <laughs> I don't need to do that anymore. Yay! 
And um, interestingly enough, uh, we should have a look here at uh, Hammer skills, but after this fight, Hysterica taking a lot of damage there's here the in the back. But the steel yields back up. To keep him alive. He is backing up, and this is a bit of a passive fight. Both teams sort of look like they kind of wanted to go in, but really wanted to protect their damage demons. Yeah, the thing is, with these uh, with these Garden Terrors up, you don't really want to commit to the fight. Uh, not unless one of their Garden Terrors is quite low. That's that's possibly the turning point in these fights. Before that, it's just this little yeah, little wiggly room where you just poke and prod. Uh, try to get some of these heroes a little bit lower. But for now, it's just waiting. But 20 seconds left here for Wellmet on their Garden Terror. So many mines from Hysterica here. He does have, you're talking about his talents, the Bullhead Mine Sokke does engage a bit, it has popped his ult, but the Void Prism has gone down on two members of well met here, and there is the Raid of Vengeance to catch out the members as they come out. Vortex is being dropped quite low, Blink Heal comes in to try and keep him alive, Divine Storm hits only Grand PKT, who is going to go down, Hysterica gets healed last second, but he goes down anyway to the Terror. And we're now sit and well met Terra has also gone down. It is one member down to two in favor of El Nexo. Alistair is very low. Nobi looked like he wanted to try and go into that, but Lucifer is still in the back there, just completely destroying the backline. Down goes the Terra finally. And Nobi is just fighting everyone, oh, but he goes down. Has Nomi, he wanted a up. little bit too much there. And oh, I think well met just overextended a little bit too crazy here. They wanted to go for Valor. They really wanted to go for Valor and take her out. But uh, that yeah, chase that's... cost them two heroes. Yeah, that was interesting. It was Hiruke and Hasuobs just fighting the terror on their own while Nomi tried to take on three members of well met and it did not go well for him. Yeah, and this does give uh, Alexa a little bit of time to go for their bruiser camps, go for their siege camp and put on a lot of pressure here. And mind you, it's only three forts or three keeps rather remaining for well met. It's true, only three keeps remaining where it is only one fort and three keeps remaining for El Nexo. This game still quite close. We're seeing a very nice play for both teams. However, we may be about to see El Nexo do their, their classic. Yeah, we're gonna engage you as you come to do your objective. It's okay. <laughs> is on the way there, but he's very, very hesitant because he's played against El Nexo before. He knows what's up and he is running mm, straight away. He knows now, he knows him. now. And mind you, we have uh, three times Bolt of the Storm here by El Nexo. So they realized, okay, we're playing this triple assassin build. Um, we, need, uh, we need the Bolt of the Storm just to get out of these fights. Yeah, we have three times Bolt of the Storm on uh, El Nexo, but we, on the flip side, we have three times resurgence on wow. <laughs> on that, that, that is pretty massive. I kind of course like the Vine Hurricane uh, taken by Uther. They could have gotten for uh, they could have gone for uh, four times resurgence. <laughs> well, like you, uh, like you said, uh, like you said earlier, this is very much playing to the team's strengths. Bolt of the Storm is very nice for our next. So just the fact they're playing a very high mobile, very high damage comp where they need to keep them alive to do the damage. So even more mobility is always going to help. And Arthas is basically their only tank. He's going to be trying to stay alive or just get back in the game as soon as possible. Resurgence, Storm Shield, just keep those assassins alive a bit longer. Whereas on the flip side, it's all survivability on the ter on the side of Well Met, which is exactly what their team's about. Staying alive and just dealing damage over time. We have Odin, we have the free resurgences. Divine Hurricane is just the engage. Ufa has about as much survivability as he needs. Yeah, and you can see that a lot also in the um, in the uh, damage statistics. Uh, Valor just doing so much siege damage, so much hero damage, 52,000. Uh, whereas the highest player on on well Matt's side has 38,000. So uh, quite a bit of difference here. Yep, this does appear to be the case. Right now though, El Nexo playing pretty far back. They were waiting for their terror before they began pushing up. And we're seeing Zeratul has in fact gone for the double ones, helping him, helping him and his team clear up those siege giants very quickly. And we have the triple lane push come from El Nexo. Nice hook there by Sokka, by Adobe though. They're trying to get some damage done onto that terror before it can really do that much to them. Hysterica, very nice positioning here, was able to take down that bulb very quickly. Is he out of that? No, he isn't. <laughs> Does get cursed. <laughs> yeah, that's just trying to uh, poke and prod a little bit here. But, oh geez, well met, missing two seats to go for their own Garden Terror. Uh, yeah, there's no a more too left. Close. Bot lane pushing, not as hard as top lane though, and we can see Chen reacting to this. He realizes there is a problem. 
and has gone to clear that, but now has to move back to the mid lane because he knows there's even more danger, and that means that Giant will in fact do some even more damage to their buildings, but Chen is very much needed here. The Bulb, doing a lot of damage, Napalm, very, very nice for clearing up the Bulb. Probably the best ability in the game for that purpose. Yeah, um, nice choice here on, on Dragonshire, eh, uh, on uh, Garden of Terror, of course, to clear that up. And now they're rotating back down, going to bot lane, and also getting rid of the towers and gates here. Yep, this so terror is doing so much work, but once again gets hooked, gets rooted, gets stunned. Polymorph onto Selke though, to try and hold him back a bit. And well met, are literally just able to sort of deal a little bit of damage over time. Yeah, but uh, I, I gotta say, I mean, uh, El Nexo definitely getting the money worth uh, out of the uh, out of the Garden Terror, getting rid of both of these uh, both of these defenses on the mid and bot lane. Yep, this is the case, and El Nexo finally that Terror expiring are gonna begin moving up and just grabbing as many Mercs as possible. They've already grabbed the only Merc in the top lane and are going to move straight to that bot lane to take all of the mercs there. Actually, if you have a look at Lulver 6D, thinking about maybe uh. taking those giants, but Stitches was there, and we do see a couple members of Wellmet here. But here's the entirety of Eldexo now. So, Wellmet, yeah, they're gonna go I for doubt the steal. they want to fight and make it worth. Yeah, that's, that's not going to work. Uh, just deal with the siege giants. Uh, they are uh, behind levels, so it doesn't really matter match that matter all that much, but the thing is, uh, with 5 versus 3, that's an easy decision to make. Yep, this is very true, and El Nexo gonna be grabbing the last remaining mercs on the map. There's one left in the top lane, and the seeds have now spawned. Only two seeds needed for well met, and we're seeing a clairvoyance come down from Ufa, just so he knows, is it is it safe? Can I get the seeds now? But we can see on our screens that El Nexo Heading up to the top lane so that they can grab all the mini camps from there and then they will likely take the top shambler to give themselves uh i believe that will be another another terror yeah could be I don't uh, math it's good. 30 seats so should be about enough yeah i don't math good it looks like it'll be enough yeah that that i'm pretty sure that'll be enough but we can also see that well met already have another terror ready themselves and yep there we go it was easily enough so we're going to see another Terra for both teams getting ready. So it's going to be very cool. Another Terra versus Terra fight. I'd like to see Well Met go straight for that top uh, top fort here and put on the pressure. But then again, they, they need can. to be ready to um, just turn back, teleport back uh, to their own um, uh, to their own base and defend if need be. Yeah, but right now they do need to defend thanks to those siege giants in the mid lane. There goes the napalm. There's the slam and the sea, gi sea Giants being pulled into range of the Keep, so the Keep can help kill them off. Well met, just doing as much as they can. They're likely going to be using this Terra for defensive reasons. Nope, looks like you were right, and it's going to be clearing the top lane, but choosing not to uh, continue pushing with it. And we're just well, going to see... Well, the thing is, now that El Nexo is, is in position uh, with their own Garden Terror, they need to go for the defense. They had that little timing window where they could have gone for offense, but now it's all defense all day for Well met. And, uh, whoa, actually pushing them back a little bit. Kind of interesting. Yeah, they uh, dealt a lot of damage to, to that. that Terra. A third of its health just from hooking it in. And we can see that, well met, all pretty much on full health, including the Terra, which just got a health globe, which has actually healed it quite a significant amount. And it's okay. Moving forward, check the bush. Yeah, he needs to watch out. Oh, oh shock there comes all. Shock and Arm missing everyone here. Very but no me, I think he got a... Yeah, I think... He got oh. Felstead in there, but then was taken out here. He stunned before he could get into the Void Prism to keep himself alive. Lucifer been dropped very, very low here. But it is that still does make it a small advantage for El Nexo for a while until Stitches yes. gets back here. Stitches he tries to resurgence. get back into the fight. He does have Resurgence, so it's going to be just a little bit until he gets back in here. Yep. But I, I like this. I like how really, well is playing this. I think El Nexo should have really used that. Uh, that to their advantage there, the fact that Stitches was, was missing. Now they have to kill him all over again, it's 5 vs 5 again. The Odin, however, has expired. A lot of ults down now, Hook does not hit anyone. Shen has still still has his ult up, we still have the Divine Hurricane up, and Lucy from almost popping out of his Garden Terror. Yeah, he's so low, one hit. There we go, Napalm will take him down. Now it is Sokka, he has 20 seconds left in this. 
Should probably go a bit ham, throw down some bulbs and just get some damage down. There's the day bomb, there's the bulb. He's just gonna deal as much damage as he can. Little time he has left, he has 11 seconds. We're gonna see a curse come down to try and catch out some members and win his team a fight. One more bulb, I think he has enough time for it. If not, it doesn't matter. He's still gonna get that for. Down goes the terror and well met. I'm now slightly ahead in terms of buildings and are looking for a possible fight here while they still can. But no, they're not able to catch out anyone. They're going to play it safe, back up, and look for something to give themselves a bit more of an advantage. As Day 9 always said in StarCraft 2, if you're ahead, get more ahead. And that's what they're yeah. doing. They're going to start working on this bottom oh, lane. Nice hook here on Alistair. Oh. There comes the Divine Hurricane, not doing all that much more. But Felser did uh, was taken out, and Hasu ups can pop his heroic once again. Goes into the Void Prison, stays safe, and now we got everyone clumped up here. Vortex trying to vault back behind the wall, and he stays safe for now, but Lucifron, he's caught out of position, Solo, and enough. the body block takes him out. Wow, what a the fight here for Well Met. Well Met seems to be winning out over the sheer damage and uh, mobility from El Nexo here. Lucifron looking for his opportunity to try and get his team back into it. Vortex also just poking him from afar, and we're seeing just poke coming out. From El Nexo, which is not what they want to be doing. They want to be just bursting down people and doing huge amounts of damage. Lord of S60 is currently visible from someone. I'm not sure what's giving them vision. There he goes. He does re-cloak. And this is looking very, very difficult for El Nexo right now. They are the first team to lose a keep. This top four, currently completely irrelevant because Well Met are ahead and they basically have a free set of XP up in this top lane when they feel like it. Yeah, that's free XP and that's always the danger for El Nexo to fear the backdoor. They can always backdoor now. Uh, two keeps gone. I'm kind of wondering why Well Met is not going for their siege camps yet, but they're probably trying to get a bit, little bit of a better timing window here and uh, put on the pressure in two different lanes to make the siege camps just that much more worth it. Quite likely indeed. We're going to see them grab as many seeds as they can. So they are ready once they have once their terror expires. Chen already going to be taking this terror. So they're not even going to gap any of the mercenary camps at all. They're just going to try and get as much push out of this as possible. They may even go for the core here. They can actually take down this top keep without the fort being down. That is not a requirement like it is in some other games to take down the first set before you take down the second set. It only counts on the core. You cannot kill the core before you have taken down a single keep. Uh, that's correct. And now we have a lot of heroes supporting back on both sides. Um, El Nexo, of course, they had that uh, little bit of a scary moment where you see players uh, porting back. But um, yeah. there was no need for any backdoor yet. Yeah, Sokke is just holding the lanes on his own right now. He's just sort of chilling, pushing the lane up, waiting for his team to re-arrive. And they will be here. I can actually, let's have a look quickly. Resurgence is up for Hammer. It is up for stitches and i'm assuming it's up for sake inside that thing as well we can't see it properly hang on yes i can i can go on his vision uh yep it's up so, yeah, so that's that's the next keep that's actually in trouble here but they do have the garden terror this time around still once hysterica enters siege mode that's a lot of damage coming out of her hysterica though choosing to be very careful in the engagements Seating up now that the curse, the uh, Smokey's curse is down and it's just going to do the damage. There is the Void Prism. Lulva 16 taking a lot of damage though. There is the Odin from Hasuobs. Choosing, uh, having a bit of trouble choosing a target there. There's the Nuke though. Lucifer taking a lot of damage here and well met. Taking a huge advantage there. Lucifer is now seriously out of position. Going to be taking a lot of damage. While Hasuobs and Hysterica are going to move in and take down this keep. That will be three keeps down for El... For El Nexo, El Nexo in serious trouble here. Down goes the bulb onto their core. Vortex trying to do damage. Grampy EVAT speed boosting his weight to try and Some survive. excellent hooks out of Nomi, keeping Lucifer out of this fight and actually uh, keeping El Nexo on the back foot. Oh, Lucifer is quite low already and Zocke moving on top of him has not pop, uh, popped his heroic yet. Oh, Vortex trying to do some damage to Soke, but it's all his ult. It doesn't matter even if they do catch him out here. Alistair trying to do as much damage as he can from range to try and keep himself alive. The core doesn't take anything more than shield damage, so it's still 100% health. Down goes the Terra, finally. And oh, Hysterica's in trouble and oh. yep, is taken out. There's still well met, now suddenly in a, in a bit of an issue here. Nice Divine Hurricane from Hiruke, but they're being chased. 
and the mobile force from El Nexo, like we talked about earlier, is great at this scenario, chasing down the enemy, and they're doing exactly that. Hiruke will be the last one to die unless Grand PKT can catch Haswobs in some way. There's the Envenom. There is the Arcane shot, but Hysterica is here with his oh. resurgence, and that does force well met back. Ufa was there as well, harassing a bit. Very nice well call here by El Nexo to make uh, to turn around and not go for the final kill here. Uh, otherwise, well met would have waited for them. Instead, they're going for the Bruiser camp. But a nice turnaround here for El Nexo in that last team fight. Very, very much so. They do have wave clearing to do in their main base. Alistair is working on that. Is taking out the catapults. There's three catapults. Four, ca five catapults. <laughs> In the bot lane, <laughs> I was, I was like, scrolling my screen down and was like, more catapults, more catapults. But Alistair and Grand Big are going to be able to clear those up. They are the most mobile. They can rejoin their team at any time. So clearing the waves, not a huge deal for them. And their top lane is pushing very, very heavily. Yeah, that's a lot of bruisers and a couple of uh, giants as well in that top lane. And it yeah, looks like Wellmet is coming, coming up there to react to it. Should clear this up pretty quickly with Tychus in there. And Nomi, of course, with the slam. Um, but uh, uh, they're kind of ignoring it for now. Yeah, but we're seeing El Nexo begin to seeds. move up to this top lane to try and fight well met for these seeds. They have a level advantage and they really want to use this to try and get something out of this. And they're going to start on the Shambler. Well met, though. They are all grouped up. Yeah. They might be looking for their chance here. Chen. The problem is here, uh, Hysterica can't really get into a nice um, cloak position with her, um, uh, with her siege Lucifron mode. But Lucifron is out of position, taking a lot of damage. Sokke is trying to jump onto people. Alistair does actually get a decent shock and all, but doesn't really hit anyone. Nice divine hurricane from Ufa. Jen actually is popped, at, only has one set of his ultimate left. He gets popped out of it and is now just going to continue pushing with his health. Hasselhoffs, there's the hook onto Alistair. He goes down as well. And we're seeing well met. It's currently one for one in terms of kills, but well met have the far more aggressive comp due to the resurgences that are pretty much up now. Lucifront fleeing for his life. Hook will be up from Nomi. Now oh, it misses. barely misses and him. Lucifront running for his life. Oh, Lucifront, I think he can still make it. Yep, he mounts up and makes it. Uh, kind of a dangerous move here by well met, but of course they do have a little bit more sustain, so they, they can at least try to go for this. Um, but should not make the same mistake as the last time where they just overextended a little bit too much. Ooh, light, oh, like Lol versus XD. My God. Wow. Good escape there by Lol versus XD. Well met. Continuing to push their advantage. And this game has been so back and forth. But well met. Winning ever so. Well, I say ever so slightly. They have taken down three keeps. It is just the core remaining. And it has taken some health damage now thanks to some catapults. Only 3%. But it is still enough. El Nexo. They have to get a very, very good fight. They are going to be taking down this terror here, getting themselves a plant terror of their own, and getting ready to fight and basically go for one last push. They need and to kill well met, make it to count push. now. They have a little bit of a timing window They're to get in ready. there. There comes the hook, Lovus is indeed, he does get back. But can they steal a little bit of... Uh, can they're they gonna, steal a couple of seeds? Couple seeds. Yeah, and nice. they take him down, but they need El uh, well met. All well met need to do is to pick people off. From yeah. El Nexo because El Nexo won't be back. Uh, yeah, they don't like have they don't have resurgence. Either. They only have one resurgence player, and that is Arfis. Um, so if they can pick anyone off, that's gonna help them out immensely here. It's less defense on their core, um, less heroes in the team fights. Well, here they come. Terra, moving in. It is on Lucifer again. Terra for El for Well Met is once again on Sokke. And once again, it's El Nexo who are on the offensive here, despite the fact their top and bottom lanes are both pushing very heavily. The El Nexo know that they need to win a fight. This is basically going to be the make it or break it for them. They need to win this fight and then push into the core and win. Hysterica taking a lot of damage after being trans after being polymorph. Down goes the bolt, trying to do the damage here. El Nexo just looking for the opportunity. They have to catch someone, and they yeah, need to kill them not twice. They can't really get in there right now. Uh, not while Sock is still so much, uh, so much HP. And Void Prison kind of wasted there on Hasu Ops. Low versus XD, car out of the position. There comes the Shock and Awe. Get some decent damage onto Hasu Ops. And there he is, Polymorph. Ooh, nice move here with oh, the Divine Hurricane. Getting Valor, getting Brightwing. And 
Zeratul also quite low here. He turns around, tries to get a rookie, and he does. But this is looking great for well met. They take down Faustad as well. That only leaves Arthas and uh, that only leaves Arthas and Law versus XD. Arthas still in the terror, trying to do everything he can to try and give his team a chance. But we can see. Well met, doing exactly what they need to do here. Sokke, who still has so much health and 30 seconds left in this Terra, heading straight for the enemy core. Hysterica is right behind him for the extra siege damage, and they are going to try and end here. Lord vs XD is here to try and defend this, but he ha he's at a terrible angle here. He's going to get polymorphed. Hysterica sieging up outside of range, and they are going to start working on this core. We're not going to see the respawns in time. The Terra is wow. now dead. Lucifron it's just going to be the Terror and the Soda. Wow, just the terror and the siege tank uh, taking out the core here. What an excellent ultimate fight here for Wellmet. Yeah, truly well met mesmerizing game. Wellmet taking the first game in its best free series. Someone pointed out in the chat though that we have uh, yesterday apparently Wellmet did lose the first game twice. Sorry, El Nexo. Sorry, lost the first game twice. So this is far from over. Indeed, very much so. But I mean, if we're gonna see games like this, bring them on! I oh want to go God, all the way. Yes, that game was three. ridiculously close. I am very happy with that game. Yeah. So um, that's about twenty-one takedowns for El Nexo, twenty-three, twenty-four for Well Met. And uh, mechanics-wise, I gotta say, um, El Nexo was always up there. Um, I think El as far El Nexo as won the game in terms of, of map mechanics, how in terms of mechanics, in terms yeah. of map control as well, but they were out drafted. The composition from Well Met was played so well that they were able to win the game with it. So, do you think that Sergeant Hammer played a big role in this? Yes, absolutely. I'd have to agree. I mean, um. Having her stand back in these in these tight situations where they were under siege by the uh, Garden Terror, yeah, uh, that's where Sergeant Hammer's uh, strength comes comes into play. That's how they managed to uh, get back up there because I mean they they were losing in the mid game and then had some amazing uh, amazing fights, some nice decision making um, when they decided to just take the Garden Terror to their uh, to their enemy, put on the pressure, and that worked out quite well for them. This is true. So right now, we are just waiting for the next uh, draft lobby to come up. Mm -hmm. I have asked Nomi to link me that when it is up. All right, so um, I think... I should ask Sokke, he's still making it. What am I doing? Oh, um, that is interesting. Um, let's have a look at the bracket right now. Uh, there's already a lobby, by the way. Oh, lobby? Okay, I'll get yep, in there right join. away. It is uh, the Blackheart Bay Yar. Oh, nice. All right, um, give me a sec. Here is the bracket right now. Uh, by the way, the bracket link yeah. is wrong. It's just nexuschamp.com slash HPL. I don't know. The bot isn't updated yet. Okay. So, yeah, over 9,000 already in the semifinals. That's interesting. I think over 9,000, that's Scrubby's team, if it is. I'm not mistaken. So, they won 2-0 versus Team Alternate. Uh, a little bit surprising. I mean, I did say I haven't watched um, Heroes in the last uh, couple of weeks over the holidays, but Alternate was a bitty, pretty big player uh, before that. So I'm kind of surprised to see uh, Grubby's team advancing over them already. But I don't know. It's Grubby in there. Don't mess yep, with him. Grubby is good. And entertaining to watch as well. And then in the remaining round two games, we have against uh, all against Authority. Um, versus Existence, then Team yep, Refuse still going versus on. Vega Squadron, and those are those games are being played out right now. I believe they're in game two or three. Todd's in custom for ten minutes, and we had a long game there. I think they could have fit in like a game or two in that time. Yeah, that's probably true. Actually, I think, I think it'll be game two. Things like thirty minute estimate, thirty minute game, and then a ten minutes into the next one. I think this is game two. Yeah, that. Doesn't make sense. Maybe we can catch another round two game before we go into the semi. Well, we'll have Maybe. to see. I think we can do one. We'll, fi we'll find out. We'll cast as many games as we can, guys. Yeah, and of course the semi-finals will be best of fives. Uh, we'll not. We're not going to play out the finals though. So it's just going to be semi-finals, best of five. So two best of five theory series. 
And um, yeah, the first semi-final contender is already in there. Over 9,000, Grubby's team. Yep, now they just have to sit back and relax. So Sokka is in the lobby, the rest of his team isn't. I'm assuming they are sorting the draft link. I'm just going to ask in the lobby for draft link. Please. Oh, have a link. Oh, have you got it already, link. okay. <laughs> um, but I Make can copy it. Can you not? Yes, you can. Uh, is it private message or lobby yep, message? It's a private message. Give you can me copy sec. from the Battle.net client then. I will. I okay. will. Okay, where is he? Nice. There oh, we go. Nomi was with me as well. Okay. So you got the link as well. Yep. Control C and Control V. Okay, so they are not like ready. So Alexo is ready. Uh, well, Matt isn't quite. Okay. Um, I'm going to quickly run and use the facilities. So I'll be right back. All right, fellas. So we're about to get ready um, for the second match here between El Nexo and Well Matt. Um, draft is somewhat up. Um, the map is, of course, Black Hearts Bay. So the map where the map objectives really shine. Um, I mean, map objectives always incredibly important. But I got. I feel like on Black Hearts Bay, they're just a level above everything else. And uh, going back to that first game. Um, El Nexo was definitely on top of their map objectives, so yeah, um, looking forward to this one and pos the possible comeback for El Nexo. Let's see what the what they're gonna choose here for their team composition. They did go for the three assassins that last game, um, which did work out well. Maybe not so much in the early game, uh, but early game is a little bit of a wonky spot for El Nexo in most of their matches. So, um, kind of surprising yeah, with the three assassins, but then again, we did have a nice counter pick with uh, Sergeant Hammer by Will Matt in that last game. All right, uh, so they're not quite there yet. Um, I did capture a couple of fights from that last uh, from that last match, so maybe we can have a look. And uh, see some nice, it nice moments here. Give me a sec to set that up. And there we go. All right, just gonna find out um, where the action kept happening. Okay. So um, this was actually kind of a nice void prison uh, put down here by. Uh, by Zeratul, catching Hiruki and Hysterica, getting them out of the fight in the sh uh, right away. Nomi is quite low as well, and uh, Shen, uh, Shen is also quite low, but he does pop his heroic, does stay alive, and Nomi backing off a little bit. Of course, he does pop out of the Garden Terror afterwards, but still, um, he was wants to stay in, um, just wants to stay back a little bit, then possibly uh, go for. Um, possibly go for the for the hook afterwards but the thing is um, this is the fight where uh, well Matt wanted to go for vortex they wanted to go for the kill uh, and put down all of the firepower onto vortex and some nice body blocking and um, saving going on by El Nexo they just try to retreat forever <laughs> and vortex does stay alive but this means that well Matt is incredibly spread out look at this well, man, all over the place. And Lucifron, he's fine. He's in the Garden Terraform. He can stay on this front line. Um, for, of course, uh, Grand PKT. Um, he, uh, he can uh, teleport back and forth. He can stay alive for a little bit longer. But it's like Well, Matt completely spread out um, very thinly here in this fight. But I think the draft is starting. So It has let's, indeed. Let's have a look at the draft. All right, so, so far, we only have the bands. Well met, starting with the Abafa ban. El Nexo, bringing in Stitches. Uh, interesting choice here. Um, probably not thinking that they would go for Sergeant Hammer again. But we'll have to see. I think as much as Sergeant Hammer was, in, uh, was important in that last game, she's not as good on this map. And Stitches was vital 
to well met success there. That is very much a target ban by El Nexo. Not happy with the amount of times they were caught. Yeah. Um, I mean, Stitches, initi his initiations weren't as good, but he did have a nice, uh, a couple of nice hooks um, in the like in the later fights. For example, getting um, getting the Garden Terror caught out of position once or twice in that fight that was immense. When they took out the third keep, that helped out quite a bit. And there's the first pick for Wermet, and it is Tychus. Yep, very unsurprising. Well like met. last game. <laughs> like last game, like you said. And um, well met seemed to prefer going for the high sustain builds. I would like to point out that this does mean that El Nexo. Ooh, we might have the bug. Mm -hmm. Oh, nope, there we go, it's fixed itself. Um, this does mean that El Nexo have Nazibo open. Nazibo. Okay, so go into detail. Nazibo is being heavily uh, heavily favored in a lot of the scenes at the moment, especially mostly in NA, but he's still very popular over here. He is incredibly good if you play, pair him with people like Chen, like Brightwing, who can keep him alive and really stop people getting to him. With Chen's Root and Brightwing's Polymorph, you can really stop people getting to Nazibo. And then his damage is incredible. All right, so he's not only good for pushing lanes, but also... Uh to get some amazing damage up yes. in the team fights. Ravenous Spirit is probably one of the best damage ultimates in the game. Yeah, and combine that with Zombie Wall and you got a nice finishing move. Mm -hmm. Tigers is like actually the... quite a good counter because he's one of the few people who has a range stun slash displacement. Ooh, Gazlo. Wow. This excites me. This is <laughs> I, interesting. Uh, Gazlo, not well known, but is very, very good on this map because there's quite a lot of mercenaries. They're very spread apart, so it's quite... And it's actually a pretty... Oh, okay. Never mind. Oh, that's misclicked. what I'm saying. They misclicked the Gazlo. Ah. Uh. Aw, that's disappointing. I was about to go into all this detail as to why is so good on this map, but... Uh. <laughs> well, as I said before, Blackheart's Bay is an amazing map uh, for the map objectives. If you would just focus on map objectives on Blackheart's Bay, you probably gonna win the game so uh, Gaslow would help out a ton here uh, but they're going for Arthas instead okay they're, say they're saying that Arthas is in place there I'm hoping the Vortex has seen it N unless we see them pick Arthas <laughs> but uh yeah but we're seeing Tassadar and Vala coming out from El Nexo and this is a very high damage team from them at the moment. But once again, a bit squishy, a bit squishy, high on survivability and maneuverability. Yeah, I like that they um, got the counter pick on Shen. This yeah. is going to help out a ton. Okay, Vortex says it's okay, and basically they're going to be treating Gazlo as Arthas. Alright, so final two picks for Well Met. Let's see what they bring out. Arthur, it's a very standard setup for them. I'm expecting Ufa. Or maybe Rhaegar if they're feeling risky. And then last pick, another warrior maybe? Or another assassin another melee assassin. Uh I mean look at most kinda, of the good warriors are kinda gone. And I say most, I mean Arthas and Chen are gone. <laughs> <laughs> well, you could go for Sonya, but she's pretty weak in the early game. Sonya, Illidan, Kerrigan, Muradin's still banned. There's Muradin Ufa. is still banned? Is he? Yeah, still not fixed. Okay. Uh, what about Tyrael? I've not Tyrael's, seen him. Tyrael's still viable, especially with, when you have Shock and Awe on your team. Oh, which they do. Yeah. So, nice combination. Shock they and might Awe, want to they preemptively got... pick... Like, I still think it's quite likely. Ooh, okay, so Todd, uh, uh, Existence just lost 2-0 to AAA. Uh... Okay. No, sorry, yeah, so AAA just be uh, Existence 2-0, so Todd's team is moving on to the next round. So uh, Todd is playing for AAA? Yes. Oh, okay. French team, right? Yes, I believe so. Okay, so waiting for the last pick from Wellmet. They have 25 seconds left. Alright, so... 
I would expect either either Zagara or another warrior. But there, nope. oh, there we go. Mm -hmm. Melee Zagara assassin. Tool. Interesting. Melee assassin with some poke potential. Arthur, they're treating Arthur as their only tank, much like El Nexo did last game. Yeah, I was going to so, say, this is so basically cool. just a switcheroo in the uh, team compositions. Yeah, and that's swapping Arthur's and Zeratul for, uh, well, no one really. <laughs> but El Nexo, they have one final pick. Tassadar will likely be treated as their second warrior, so there is a chance of Nazibo, but there's still also open options for uh, Sergeant Hammer, Nova, Rainer. Well met, uh, El Nexo, sorry, quite a good big fan of Reyna and Zagara, as it happens. So both of those are potential. I'm very excited to see what they pick here. A lot of good options here. Yeah. Could also go for Kerrigan or, or Illidan. They could. They could go for a second melee. Very, very Is popular. Is Illidan still bugged, by the way? Uh, He was bugged? I think there was, there was a pretty big bug for, for him as well. I don't remember. Where if there couldn't... is, then an Uberag! Okay. Wow! Nice! So, nice move. I like it. I I personally would have uh, would have thought that they would have gone for a second... Uh, they would have gone for another assassin and treated Tassadar as their second warrior kind of thing and just have him shield everything. But taking an Uberag is an interesting move. It's going to really change up how they engage, how they escape. And this, Like we pointed out before, once again, a very mobile comp. By El Nexo. Yeah. But still a little bit of a switcheroo. Um, yeah. With uh, Shen and Anubarak as their warriors this time. So they have a little bit more sustain now. Well well met, uh, on the other hand. A little bit more on the squishy side. Quite possibly. I'm I'm interested to see this. Like, this, the comps are still in the same vein as what they did in the last game. Just like you said, with a couple, bit of switch ups couple characters switched around but they're still in the same vein it's very much tanky sustain coming out of well met and maneuverability and damage with a bit of engage coming out of el nexo yeah let's see how well met handles the void prism um i think uh, el nexo had a couple of nice moves last game but nothing too game changing i mean they did help out a little bit but not those really massive wombo combos or nice setups where you just get the surround going after the Void Prism. But uh, this is some nice combo potential for Wellmet. Indeed. I would once again like to say I am severely disappointed that that was actually an accidental <laughs> Gaslo. <laughs> yeah, I, I agree. Gaslo. <laughs> would have been nice to see him. Yeah, have you ever seen him in, in a professional game? Yes, I did. It was cool. He lost. <laughs> but it, it was cool to see him. But uh, someone in the chat just pointed out Void Prism, Gravity Bomb, Divine, yeah. sh divine Shock and Awe, uh, divine, uh, divine Hurricane Shock and Awe. Uh, if you replace Shock and Awe with Precision Strike, you can pretty much get the same result in a much better area. Or, uh, another way to do it, uh, Divine divine Storm, mosh, uh, Gravity Bomb, Mosh Pit, Fire Breath, or Lightning Breath from ETC. Okay. That is that is what I do. Like uh, t a team Wait, I've been Diablo, right? With. Yes. Lightning breath. Okay. Yeah. Diablo and DTC, two of the least picked warriors, if not the two least picked warriors. We've been running them and just been running. ETC is much better than most people believe, as I'm sure Well Met will tell you. <laughs> he is very good if you can play him correctly, especially mostly on ladder. But I'm sure you can fit him into a pro game now and again. And then combine that with combine his mosh pit with someone to bombo with, like Diablo's lightning breath. And you're going to be killing pretty much anyone. Ooh. Well, these nice wombo combos, but I think they don't work out quite as well in most pro, in pro games because play pro players know how to react to them. ETC is actually very hard to react to when you get to twenty, but that is the issue. You have to mm -hmm. get to twenty. Yep. Uh, by the way, uh, this is Cookie Time. Just told us how uh, what the Illidan bug was: a shield on his evasive ability that would absorb damage from auto attacks. Okay. Uh, even though you were supposed to dodge the auto attacks. Yeah, dodges rather than shielding. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. Actually, doge the auto attacks. <laughs> <laughs> okay, fair enough. Alright, uh, so yeah. is everyone in here? I believe so. They're, we have 8 out of 10 ready to up. I'm assuming they'll go when people are ready. Nomi apologizes for something. I think we have everyone in. We're waiting for Hastuobs to ready up, and I'm assuming the other person... Yeah, is Nomi and he's hidden. 
Did he ask for a sec? Okay, alternate uh, surrendered game two. By the way, um, they had they had uh, forty plus network spikes, so that's why they um, got. Uh, on. Hashtag team house life. See it. The, so right now that means alt, uh, over nine thousand and against all authority are the two teams to make it through, and so that means no matter what happens, we're going to have at least three teams in the semi-finals with X Starcraft two pros. <laughs> excellent, <laughs> truly excellent. By the way, guys, um, since we do have a little bit of downtime, go check out the uh, twelve days of alpha, um, uh, twelve days of alpha article here on nexuschamp.com. Uh, I would recommend the Artifacts article. It was mm -hmm. very, very cool. I really enjoyed that. It was a good read. A little bit of uh, time travel. <laughs> <laughs> Let's do the time warp again. Oh, and we have arrived that's not. in pirate times. <laughs> oh, jeez. Uh, Artifacts. N not a good time. Not a good time. But <laughs> I enjoyed it. It was definitely not a good thing in the game. But while it was there, I, you were able to cheese so much stuff. Like the Diablo full ability power combo that would one-shot literally anyone. Yep. Alright, let's get started here with the game. We're in match number two between El Nexo and Well Met. On the left side, we have our Spanish team by the name of El Nexo. And we have Grand PKT on Brightwing. Alistair is playing Tassadar. We have Low vs. XD playing Anoop. And in the bot line, Vortex on Vala and Lucifron on Shen. And on the right side, we have Well Met. And all in the mid lane, we have Haruke on Ufa. We have Hasuobs on Tychus. We have Sokke on Zeratul. Nomi is on the Arthas. And Hysterica is on the Falstad. And a Psy Storm immediately comes out, but they're going to give up that Watchtower immediately. Yeah, kind of an old school move going for the watchtower. Uh, everyone going for the watchtower at least. That did give uh, El Nexo a little bit of a time here to get three heroes down in bot lane. And might be a little bit of a surprise move for Well Met. Let's see. Lucifer trying to bait them out, possibly. Possibly. He's with Lover 60 and Vortex waiting for their moment. We might see a 3v3. Lucifer moving in, trying to draw them out. And Vortex immediately bolts again, trying to get the damage down, but. Very nice disengage by Well Met. Just gonna back up, play it safe. Uh, kind of surprising that Low vs. XD didn't pop his um, did pop his stun there. Yep, this is true. Chests have already spawned. The top chest already gonna be going over to Well Met. They take control of that area nicely. Whereas the bottom chest went pretty much over to El Nexo in the form of Vortex and LOL versus XD. They're trying to get control of this bot, this middle watchtower again, and they're going to be able to do it with the help of Grand PKT. Alistair moving in, possibly looking to help out, but does not need to. They have the control. Yeah, and I'd like to point out, Nomi currently carries all five coins, uh, so he needs to stay back a little bit. Not uh, really the ideal position you want to be in. As the tank, as the only tank, and Zaka is taken out there. First blood. Yep, goes El to El Nexo. Yep, El Nexo taking the first blood, and they are looking for their opportunity. They're just pushing as hard as they can, and they're actually managing to push all of the lanes except for mid lane at the moment. Alistair doing a good job of clearing that though, and keeping his towers at full ammo. And there's Hasuops coming in uh, mid lane as well now. Nice, nice time on Vortex. But uh, it's four against two, so they have to stay back for now. Possibly rotate back up. Oh no, they're actually going for the bruises already. Yeah, going for the bruises, gonna get that push going so that they have an opportunity to maybe push into the pirate area to turn in those coins that they have picked up already. So right now, we're seeing that we're seeing both teams playing fairly evenly. The kill, the only kill in the game in favor of El Nexo. And El Nexo getting a bit more map control. Well met, gonna be trying to use their bruisers to get a bit of that back. Yeah, the bruisers early on, quite strong. I mean, they were nerfed a little bit uh, in the last patch, but they're still quite strong early on. And uh, very much worth uh, getting if you can before level 10. And there we go, going into the top lane. Doing a little bit of a push here with Hasuops and Hiruki. Kind of bolstering those bruisers. 
And yep. now we see the rotation back down. Alistair, he's in trouble. Oh, and there the comes the stun. No. Ooh, nice move here. Four against one. That's not even fair. Yep. Not even fair. Didn't they even have the phase shift up? He does go down. But the first turn in, going over to El Nexo, and they are moving into this mid lane to see if they can catch someone out from this push. Well met. All pulling back from Lulva 60 in Vortex, but they do gain control of this area. Yep, and I liked how they actually put on a little bit of da damage onto the uh, mid lane. That helps out quite a bit in that uh, getting the first cannon. Oh, Lucifron. Ooh, Lucifron, he's Run, in trouble. Lucifron, Root doesn't hit. He is able to get out of there. Yeah, but Lucifron did a good job getting rid of the ammo here in the bot lane. So definitely uh, worth his time down there. And that's some more map objectives being taken here by Well Met, and they seriously need to. They want to get that first turn in as well. Yep, so while this is going on, we're seeing Sokke dancing around looking to try and defend. But it's unlikely he will go down. There we go, it does get stormed. Both teams taking their mercenaries and having a look at some of the talents. We can see that Anubarak has in fact gone for the mercenary lord and we can see that in effect right now being used on those siege giants. And that is going to seriously help Lucifron, who's already excuse me, doing very, very well in this bottom lane. Yeah, this is an incredibly push. strong push coming into we'll the bot nice. lane. They're gonna need more than Hysterica down here to defend this. Even now, the bruises are being taken, so that's even more pushing potential here for El Nexo. They're actually gonna and leave this and just use this as an opportunity to try and turn in. Haswobs does have five coins on him, and I believe they still have a couple coins hovering around. Yep, Arthas has 11 coins. He's on his way down. <laughs> He's gonna turn in while we see the rest of Ooh, what Hasu Ops is in trouble. Hasuops back out. He does use first aid. Hysterica dashes past as well. Hiruke and Sokke are both down here, but there are two sets of Merc Lorded mercenaries here. The Sea Giants and the Bruiser Camp. They're going to push this down very, very heavily. Yeah, they need more help down here. Otherwise, uh, they're going to lose a lot of health on that fort. And there we go. Arthas turns around. He helps back out. But this does give El Nexo a little bit of time to rotate back up and go for their boss. Yep, El Nexo, once something? again, showing exactly why they were doing so well in the last game. Incredible map control, incredible decision making on where to be and what to be doing. Only on a map like this, they where the map objective basically does the majority of the damage in terms of the pirate ship, it's working, excuse me, so much better. Yep, uh, really nice play here with their mobility, just uh, abusing the hell out of it. And that's going to be the boss in top lane. Uh, the fort already took a little bit of damage and got rid of most of its ammo. So that's a pretty strong boss coming into the top lane. Yep. However, well met is in position to defend this. The rogues are up for both teams. Um, I don't see Nothing any out of the ordinary. Yeah. The only ones we might see a bit of variation on are Brightwing and Valor. But we see Reign of Vengeance and Blink Heal for them. Nothing too out of the ordinary. Good. Boss is being dealt with, but uh, did a little bit more damage here on the top lane. Not too much, but El Nexo did use that time to buy up, uh, pay up again. And we'll get the next barrage coming in. So that's the top fort gone. Top fort does go down, and we're actually going to see Well Met try and get some counter attack damage done themselves. Well Met, El Nexo though, another turn in. They're taking down, the top, yeah, like you said, top fort does go down, and they get a bot fort themselves. And they're just going to continue pushing this. And they still have four cannon shots left, which is going to start on that middle lane ta on those middle lane towers and that gate. And that will go down very quickly. They still have one shot left, which will uh, be shot onto a tower. Do some damage while El Nexo continue to push the bottom lane. And they're actually going to be able to take down these towers and the gate. And then they will likely back up, not yep. wanting to risk getting caught out by Well Met, who have been forced to back. Yeah, that's, uh, that's the forced hearthstone coming out of them. And they wanted to stop this onslaught before a keep goes down. That would have, um, yeah, that would have seriously helped them back. So okay, okay, you're in the wrong place at the wrong time. But it's going to be Haruke who's the one who's caught out. We'll see another kick from Chen in a second once that route ends. Try and catch him out, but it doesn't matter. Gets taken out anyway by Valor, and we're seeing an inc incredible play here from El Nexo and someone pointed out in the chat yes Valor is in fact doing the multi-shot build this is much more common than any other build for Valor at the moment due to the fact it's the one that does the most damage and Frost Shot is actually an incredibly nice ability in terms of the fact it's a lot of damage and slows down your enemies when Valor already gets a speed boost from Hatred 
you're going to be chasing for quite a long time. And with the help of battle momentum, you're going to just get so much more damage. Yeah. Um, excellent build on Valor. And I also like the play for El Elnex, so they always buy a little bit of time, um, take down a single hero, and then go straight for some bruisers, um, move the entire team back into the bot lane, and then use that time to go for the uh, go for the Sea Giants in another lane. So, um, really, really solid play coming out of El Nexo. Yeah, but now they're going for their own Sea Giants again, just getting some damage done. They have mercenaries pushing everywhere, and the good thing about a Nubrak. Anubrak is being picked on these high mercenary maps for this exact reason. He's very mobile due to the fact he can burrow under stuff and get to places quick enough. And he can oh, basically nice Void Prism! Oh, prison. level 60, he dives in there. But okay, the Void Prism fades, Vortex taking a lot of damage. He's oh, almost taken out, but there comes the Polymorph on Nomi. Nomi goes down, and now we're seeing Zeratul blinks back in, but he is not able to get anything. It does, in fact, go down, blinking to the wrong spot here. And we're seeing El Nexo driving back, well met here. One kill for two in favor of El Nexo. And that's the next barrage coming in for them as well. They do have the time to take the bruises in bot lane. So that's double action for El Nexo now. I think they're gonna get a keep out of this, uh, especially with the bruises still up in top lane. And still having well met up in there, occupied, and having to react to this next barrage uh, and the bruisers. Yeah, well met doing, having serious issues here, just trying to defend themselves, but they're just taking so much damage from everything right now. I said it earlier and I'll say it again, El Nexo, amazing map presence, amazing control, amazing objective control. And on this map, it's almost impossible to beat them when they're playing this well in this style. Yeah. Um, just having that solid control over the map, map map objectives helps out quite a bit here on. You could like probably win this game without a sing win on this map without a single kill yeah. if you were able to play like El Nexo with this kind of control. I, I would agree. I would agree. And that's the next coins going for them, going for the kill here on the top chest. Oh, Hasu up some trouble. Ooh. This front moves in. It's being dropped and low. There is the brew just tanking it as well as the shield from Tassadar. Just tanking everything. Tassadar, as we can yeah. see, gone for a very storm-heavy build, but taking mental acuity, reducing the uh, cooldown of Oracle a bit so that he can keep giving his team vision and the Shrink Ray. Very nice to targeting people like Tychus once he is in Odin form. And there we go, another Oracle revealing Sokke, making it very difficult for him to get a good engage. And the uh, Puntering Shot does get it as well. Nice Void Prism, though. And this is well Met's time to try and fight here. There's the Odin being popped. Where is the Shrink Ray from Tassadar? Needs to drop that. Sokke somehow manages to survive. Shrink Ray's been used on Arthas instead, but Alistair already popping his ult. Going to be trying to go in here. Lucifer dives into the back and ult straight away. The Divine Storm does nothing. Sokke Okay, is just running away here, does not want to try and fight this. Looking for an opportunity, down goes Arthas, and we're seeing Hasuobs being chased down here by Chen. And we have Alistair and Grand Piketty with him, down goes Ufa, Hasuobs will die to Envenom. It is just Zeratul and Falstad. nope, just Falstad. Oh, just Falstad. <laughs> At the bottom there. Wow. Wow, that was a nice shot. Multi what an engagement. I was going to say, El Nexo did an it's amazing okay, job, just... Oh, oh, there he's back. back. There he's back. Someone has that um, on the screen. And Exo did an amazing job just splitting up the team in that previous fight. And um, here, it just seemed like uh, after that Void Prism was gone, everything fell apart uh, for Wellmat. Yeah, this <laughs> like, Wellmat had such a good engagement there. Void Prism was okay. The Void Prism was okay. The Shock and Awe was also very nice, did a lot of damage, but the fact that Valor survived. Yeah, was the problem there? An incredibly last, incredible last second clutch heal from Brightwing is what really put that in favor of Wellmet. And then suddenly, with both their with their assassin and their pseudo assassin alive, they were able to turn around and gain back control of that fight and just pick off everyone with their more mobile comp. And now moving on to the boss, they will be taking that. It's already a keep down for well uh, for Wellmet. And the bot lane is pushing very high, but we're going to see a fight at this golem. Void Prism, Void Prism goes down and he steals it! Sokke grabs it! Vortex, not in the Void Prism, continues chasing down and is able to get Sokke. 
and we're seeing Vortex chasing onto this, doing so much damage. Astercia goes down. Hiruke will go down. Sprint will not help you this time. Nomi is fighting everyone right yeah, now. Nomi being Kendall body blocked as well in there. Oh, and looks like... Ooh, his, oh, he's going onto Vortex. Excellent. Trying to kill him, but it's, there's the heal. Will it be enough? Nope. Vortex does get killed off by the help of minions and Ufa. And that is ev that is still an ace, though. Five for one in favor of El Nexo. And they only got that one with the help of a ghost Ufa and some minions giving them some assistance. Great steal, though. But they gave yeah. all their lives for it. Yeah, I don't know. I, I don't know if I like that steal. They... I mean, they, they were two levels behind anyway, so maybe that steal could have been worth it. Just losing zero to for it would have been fine, but losing the entire team, hell no. Yeah, <laughs> like you said, just zero would have been fine. I think zero should have just jumped it on his own and stolen it, just given his life for it. That would have been fine, but they chose to fight there with a two level disadvantage. Not the best idea. Yeah, uh, not at all. Now both teams are going for their coins. Um, of course. El Nexo, they have to pay up a lot more, 18 coins right now, so they're on their uh, fourth, I think their fourth barrage already, while we're met, still in the second, they didn't even have the time to turn anything in, and now they lost so many coins in that previous fight, so um, yeah, it's gonna be a hard, hard run for them to turn this game around. Yeah, we are seeing well met trying to get this back in with the help of some mercenaries, they're gonna be grabbing those bottom bruisers and stealing the coins from them. El Nexo, though, are all over the map. We're seeing them pick up coins from everywhere. Brightwing is, in fact, just pushing because she can teleport whenever she likes. Bottom Chest does go over to Well Met, though, and they are looking for what would be their second turn in of the game. El Nexo, not caring at all. They are just going to continue pushing, grabbing objectives where they can. Brightwing has teleported somewhere. Where'd she go? Oh, there she is. To the bot lane with Alistair to help uh, D push this. El Nexo giving well met the turn in and they're just clearing, letting the burst areas do their jobs and that top lane wave. Wow. So many minions. Yep, that's a lot of minions and they got some decent damage onto the keep, losing a quarter of its health. But yeah, I mean, you're, you're incredibly right here. Um, El Nexo just has so, so such solid map control um, and this does give them the ability to just split up across the map and of course their mobility also helps out quite a bit they can always uh, try to find another engagement once they are all uh, here as well. oh, okay go to the storm twilight archon storm shield again very similar but we're seeing the double resurgence this time on their warriors of grand pkt almost caught out but the last second blink heal to escape such good reactions and now El Nexo are looking to start the fight on their terms. Luzafron getting ready. Nice Void Prism though onto two members of El Nexo. Luzafron continuing to fight Nomi. Alistair is 1v1ing one, one Hysterica. Hysterica is just ignoring him and just flying away. Sokke is able to blink out and is going to escape. Hysterica will not be so lucky. Hasselobs is being chased down. Lulver 16 going to be able to get a knock up. He's out of his Odin and he will go down. Yeah, that, that was an incredible fight for El Nexo, and it's getting more and more unlikely for Wellmat to turn this around. Uh, they're down to two forts. These fights are getting more one-sided every time. Down yeah. goes Zeratul, another ace for El Nexo, another keep down, like you said. That oh. one siege giant just tanking everything. He is huge. He's been working out, and we're going to be seeing El Nexo moving onto the core here with the help of a full volley from the Blackheart. Yeah, and that's 15 second cooldown down. with Arthas. Uh, they're not going to make it back in time. This is going to be 1-1 uh, for El Nexo. This is their yeah. turnaround. They're making that happen. And we're going into a third and final game here in round two of the Heroes uh, Champions League qualifier. I am so glad we chose this game to cast. <laughs> this yeah. is so good. This was, this was the best. Yeah, so we've seen well met dominate on a, or not dominate but just able to take control and win on a map where it was mostly centered around team fighting we've seen el nexo take control and win a map where it was mostly centered around map control and objectives it is now well met's map what do you think they'll pick here uh, mm, i don't know possibly possibly dragonshire 
I was thinking Dragon Shower as well. Like, maybe Cursed? Definitely not Mines. We have seen what <laughs> El Nexo could do no, on Mines. No, not Mines. So not Mines at all. I think Dragon Shower is the most likely because the objective on that map is the, probably the least important or the least deadly. You can't split push as much with the Dragon Knight as you can with a Curse. So, yeah, I think Dragon, Knight, Dragon Shower would be their best pick. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I gotta agree. Um... Dragonshire. I, I also feel like the dragon is not quite as an important map objective as in some of the other maps. So um, it would be would be a good choice for for them to go for the dragonshire. Indeed. So, waiting for them to set up a lobby. I am hovering over Sokke. Wow, this is the most people I've seen online in a while. I had to scroll quite a long way to get to Sokke. <laughs> Lot All right, of online heroes today. Nice to see. So, gonna wait for them to get into a lobby. But that last game, I'm just looking at the kills currently. Most kills on uh, most kills on the side of El Nexo was 17. Most kills on the side of Well Met was three. <laughs> yeah, and even so, we didn't have that many team fights. We did. So no. ev even more impressive. El Nexo just sort of avoided them. They were like, okay, there's coins over there, or there's an enemy over there. We're going to yep. go for the coins. Your lives are worth nothing to us. I have a link for the draft. Lovely. Um, I do not have it yet, so if I'll you can send it to it. you. Thank yeah. you. And I'll set the draft okay. up for you, and I'll be right back. Okay. Yep, I am in the draft page. Vortex already in there. Just need to wait for Sokke to jump in as well, and then we can get started with the draft and get it underway. So, guys in the chat, who do you think is going to win? We do not know the map yet. I may PM Sokke, I may PM Sokke and ask him, uh, just to give you a hand there. But seeing the last two games, who do you think is going to win? I'm currently seeing a lot, of, a bit of a El Nexo, uh, El Nexo support due to the fact that apparently El Nexo always seem to lose their first game. Which is rubbish in the best of one, but still. Uh, <laughs> apparently, Elnexo always lose their first games in the best of threes. And we will uh, we will see if this is the difference. Well met, though. Played very, very well. I am interested to see how this turns out. Let's so bring up the draft again so I can keep an eye on it. So yeah, let me know. Who do you think is going to win this next match? Will it be well met with their pretty decent team fights and very good... Uh, very good play in the team fights or will it be El Nexo with their incredible map control and objective decisions vote now all right we're still waiting for Sokke to get into the yeah we're still waiting for Sokke to get into the draft there we go well met no oh it's Nomi sorry is in the draft this time so that's nice um okay we apparently have someone finding us the get uh, is going to be finding us games in the future that is nice and we will get that going as soon as possible so both players are in the draft neither are ready yet and we still don't really have a lobby so i'm not really sure how what map we're playing let me uh let me pm know me and ask um what is the map and then bring up chat so i can see people replying Uh, okay, doesn't appear the stream is caught up yet, so we're good. Okay, apparently the last map is cursed, so not Dragonshire, which is fair enough. All right, there's currently a lot of chat as to whether Hots will become an eSport in the chat. I believe yes, very much so. I also saw a. I also saw some chat earlier that appears the mods were asleep. For I was also I was casting, so I didn't have time to remove people. But yeah, try to keep the chat civil, please, guys. People are entitled to their opinion. It doesn't matter. Just leave them to. Just leave them to it. If they're offensive, I'm sure a mod will appear and ban them. But try to keep the chat civil. It doesn't matter. And it appears that Paul has returned. Maybe. All right. Yes, Back he has. Uh, right. We currently have both players in the lobby uh, for the draft, but neither her. But Vortex has yet to ready up. Do we know map yet? Yeah, we do. Yep, it is cursed. Apparently. Ooh. Okay. Hmm. It's interesting. 
them, indeed. Yeah, I've asked the chat like who they think is going to win. The chat is uh, just about to catch up. In fact, I believe it's just caught up because the first reply I've just seen El Nexo appear several times. Oh dear. Yeah, I think. Well, I mean, they're right. El Nexo is definitely the favorite here, but yeah. considering well, El Nexo was in the vote for uh, the best, best team, team in the world yeah. currently, I'm I El Nexo is by far the favorite coming in here, but. There are some incredible teams in this. I mean, Triple A, their new lineup is very, very solid, and over nine thousand. First time we've really seen them in a prop in a very d uh, big tournament. And they <coughs> are already dominating their way through, taking out Fallen Superheroes and Team Alternate. Yeah, but um, I, I mean, Grubby, he's been training a lot lately. He's he has. been streaming a lot of heroes. Um, he probably trained before, but now he's also uh, putting it online, putting it on that Twitch. Warcraft free micro, man. That <laughs> that Warcraft free micro. I think it helps out quite a bit, especially once we get the uh, Lost Vikings in there, and you can oh actually control God, yes. three separate heroes at once. We're gonna see so many Starcraft people come in for that. Like, uh, I actually had a. Like, moving on to a slightly different game, just for a second, just for a bit of context here. We had a player in the UK who was one of the best by far in StarCraft in out of the UK players. Used to play really well in every tournament. His name was Shibby. And he stopped playing for a while. And I found him at another event, and he was playing Dota. And I was like, I, I wasn't very familiar with Dota at the time, and I was like... Why? What's the appeal of playing Dota? And he was like, "It's." He, he said, "It's still difficult, but I have to concentrate on on less stuff, and I only play Meepo because I'm StarCraft and I like to mic." <laughs> okay. <laughs> I was like, "Fair enough, good reply." But that's what I expect Lost Vikings is going to be like, just multitasking and microing stuff all over the map. So we'll need at least one StarCraft um, pro in each team now. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You got you got to make him to micro the Vikings. You got to get that XP. Exactly, and you need one. You need at least one compulsory pickup of those uh, micro heroes. Exactly. So, the, the first ban has started. Yeah, and the first ban is Stitches again and Abathur again. I'm so, sensing a theme. Yep. <laughs> so, uh, if we're going by the theme, El Nexo should pick up Chen or Brightwing, one of the two, whichever one they prefer. I think Brightwing. They, they, El Nexo really liking Brightwing at the moment. Mm-hmm. Um, they did go for Brightwing in all three games, did they? Uh, all two games so far, right? Two so far, yeah. Mm -hmm. As their first pick. Or their second pick, if they were second pick. Alright, so first pick, you think Brightwing? I, I'm gonna go with the flow and say it's Brightwing. Could also be Valor. They also Could like Valor. Could also be Valor. They, they like Valor, they like Chen, and they like Brightwing. Those seem mm -hmm. to be their favorites. So, I'm, but I'm expecting Brightwing, because that's what they seem to be going with. Yes, I think House Ops is still playing StarCraft 2. Yeah, and people asking what the delay is, it's uh, players not readying up. <laughs> it happens. <laughs> it happens, we can't deal with it. We are not in a LAN environment, so we can't go up behind players and just say... <laughs> give them nudge on the hat. Yeah, give them nudge. Shen. Just hurry up. Chen is the first pick, yeah. I like Chen as the first pick, especially like since well, well Map played him so... Well, in that first game, so... Yeah, now Nexo played him so well in the first game. He's a popular pick at the moment. So, well met. It is now their choice. <coughs> My throat is appear to be hating me at the moment because it is so cold. Yeah, um, also, I also have a cold. Couldn't shake it till today. Uh, hopefully... I have failed to shake it at all. <laughs> uh, t it, Grubby is playing for Team Over 9000. Yes, he is. Grubby on Team Over 9000, Todd on Triple A. We have a lot of StarCraft people. If there's a StarCraft person on someone in the last two teams, either Refuse or Vega Squadron G2A, then we're going to have like an All StarCraft semi, All StarCraft semi finals. <laughs> that would be pretty nice. It is. It's nice to see the swap over. Nice to see a lot of people playing on it. Tychus uh, is the first pick for Wellmet. Yep, very think unsurprising. Yeah, that was also their first pick uh, in the last game, I think. Let's yep. actually check out those first picks from the previous oh. games. Yep. I closed my yep. I closed my stuff. Oops. He was always the first pick. Yep, not surprising. They still get a second pick though, so they probably want a warrior, Arthas. Nope, Brightwing stealing it. Stealing the Brightwing. 
That means El Nexo oh. actually need to play a different support. They've already played Rhaegar today, so that is potential. And Rhaegar did work out quite well for them in the mid game and getting a lot of heals in. Yeah, save Valor multiple times was very yeah. nice. And I think Rhaegar is an excellent choice if you go for that three assassin composition. Um, but I do like the Brightwing steal for Wellmet. I've not seen them play Brightwing uh, at all, I think. But just going for the steal is so solid. Yep, yeah, we see El Nexo, uh, whoever their support is, will be feeling very, very comfortable. Uh, that's Grand PKT, sorry, who is their support. Will be feeling very comfortable on that Brightwing after playing it two times in a row. And that having it taken from him means he has to get back used to, in this case, Uther. Uther, okay. Well, I mean, Uther is one of the best supports in the game as well. So, I mean, there wasn't really that much of a choice here. I'm kind of surprised that El Nexo went for Uther straight away. They could have had... Yeah, they could the leave support pick. till last, but they're going to yeah. take up Valor as well. I think they're just trying to draw out counter picks because we're on the Cursed Hollow. Once again, there is still potential for Nazibo. Okay. I'm trying to draw out counter picks now. Might make all the difference. Well, the mind games come into play. Well, Matt could also go for a uh, Nazibo straight away. <laughs> but then that leaves uh, Valor and Uther uncountered. <laughs> this is true. Well, Matt it is now their pick again. And. I'd say go for Arthas. Arthas Falstad, I kind of yeah. like. Arthas Falstad, I do like that. And then just react with the last pick. Yeah, exactly. It's very nice being a uh, second yes. pick in that way that you get a last pick. There's our first and Falstad. I think it's they are Brightwing be... already. Brightwing Falstad. Gotta get that double bribe. I'd like to see Tassadar. Mm -hmm. Tassadar. Okay. Okay. That's fine. Tassadar was very effective last game. So not too surprised to see him coming out again. El Nexo. Time for their last two picks. They need a second warrior or a pseudo warrior and a second assassin. Their pseudo assassin seems to, uh, the only pseudo assassin in the game really seems to have uh, disappeared over to well met. Mm. So we will see. Yeah, someone pointed out in the chat. Uh, what are some of the best teams? Starcraft, 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 X Starcraft pros, and then you have C, and then you have Cloud Nine in America, which is all just League of Legends players. <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll see. Yeah, I think we'll see more League of Legends players, players making that. Making their way into the game. Yeah. And then you have uh, Dignitas, which yeah. is the new Dignitas team, which is all crisis. their old Infinite Crisis players. And Ooh, and there's Nazi Bow. <laughs> and they took a Nubarak. They stole a Nubarak, who is the direct counter to Nazi Bow. Great choice. There is still displacement in the form of Brightwing and Tychus. But if they can keep them away from Nazi Bow, El Nuxo might have j might just destroy Well Met with just Nazi Bow, just chilling in the back. So what is the I counter? was going to say Stitches, but no, he was banned. He's banned. Who's and left? They need a warrior. Maybe so... Zagara? Zagara, long range stun. I would maybe Tyrael? Just Tyriel. for dodge, yeah, just Tyriel. get in there into the back line. ETC is, has a lot of CC, but you once again need to get him to the back line. Kerrigan, possibly? If you want to be risky, then... <sighs> yeah. Well, that's it. As someone pointed out, let's enter more into some stand-up comedy here, and they could, they could pick Sonya. And then no, just not Sonya. Please don't go for Sonya. Um, Please Zagera? go for Sonya. I'd like to see it. <laughs> I think if they pick Sonya, they're going to be demolished. Because then El Nexo... Oh, it's Hammer. Hammer's okay. good. Okay, once like again, it. Hammer. That does mean that they're playing very risky and they're relying purely on Tychus and Brightwing to stop those uh, stuns coming... to uh, try and interrupt Nazibo. Mm. Yeah, range lock quite as good. And uh, for the person asking else. in the ch asking in the chat, no, uh, Jade has not played at all because she has no escape until level thirteen. That's simple as that. You you're playing someone who does reasonable damage for an assassin who has no escape. It's just not worth it. It's like Nova minus the stealth. So does Sergeant Hammer have no um, n no stun disrupt? Uh, no no stun. She has a knockback. If okay. she can get near enough. 
Yeah, but that's pretty close range. I mean, Nazibo it's usually stays out range. of that range. The my, you can also take my not back. I believe that's a level 13 talent, mm -hmm. which is pretty nice. Yeah, it's level 13 because 16 is Hover Siege if you take that. I'm just going from my hammer build. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I like the my build that you suggested. Mind. Just having like massive mind stacks everywhere. Oh, yeah. And that's not, that's not my suggested build. That's, uh, I personally go for a completely different build. Okay. Well, uh, someone told me about it. But the stacking mines is nice. Just stack mines in front of you and just chill. But that's not a build. That's more of a strategy. The, the massive mine build is funny, but it's not very effective because you can just sort of stand out of range and shoot the mines. Yeah. But, but I mean, it's more of a thing for, for solo queue. Yeah. But... Now, my solo queue build for Hammer <laughs> is you take Ambush level 1, na uh, Napalm level 10, and Hover Siege level 16. You wait until the t you can see the enemy team somewhere else, you stealth up about halfway down the lane and float invisibly into the enemy base and start destroying their keeps. Okay. Okay. <laughs> stealth tank for the win. <laughs> <laughs> it is surprisingly effective, especially if your team can keep the enemy busy. You can basically float to their base undetected and just destroy as much as you can before they arrive and then boost away and put some mines down as you run. Uh, sounds kind of like... What was that game? Uh, Battlefront? Battlezone? Something like along those lines. I know there was a... With I know Command and Conquer tanks. sort of went a bit weird. Like Red Alert, where you could sort of... I remember Apollo talking about it a while back, where he was playing uh, Command and Conquer, and he suddenly realized that he had his home base cloaked and had a tunnel leading all the way from his home base to the enemy base where he was sending cloaked tanks into his enemy base from his cloaked base into a through a tunnel. And that's when he realized, yeah, this game's got a bit silly. Yeah, but it's fun. <laughs> Tesla's, uh, Tesla Towers. Yeah, Tesla true. Tanks. But I, right. I did like um, uh, Generals quite a bit as well. I did too. All right, I'm going to run to the facilities. I'll be back hopefully before the game finishes loading in. Be right back. Uh, why is Muradin banned? Uh, Muradin has a bug right now. And um, I think it's uh, affecting his um, out of combat regeneration. It's like 20 times higher or something. Or 10 times higher. Uh, which is basically why he's uh, still banned, permanent banned. And I think everyone is about ready, so we can load into the game. By the way, the score is one against one. So this is the final game. We are in a best of three here in round number two for the Heroes Premier League qualifier. Um, the first one in EU. And the map is Cursed Hollow. Yeah, the mines are great against melee heroes. Definitely agree. And here we are on Cursed Hollow. As I said, everyone's spamming their abilities. And the team on the left, in the blue trunks, they are El Nexo. And we have Lobo 60 playing an Uberak. We have uh, Lucifron playing Chan. And Vortex is playing Nazibo. Uh, Grand PKT is playing Uther. And Alistair is on Vela. And on the right hand Five, side in four, the red trunks, three, it is two, well met. One. And starting in the top lane, we have Haswabs on the Tychus. No one in the mid lane, and in the bot lane, it is Nomi on the Arthur, Sokke on the Tassadar, Hiruke is on the Brightwing with the Master Skin, very nice. And it is Hysterica on the Sergeant Hammer. So they have play definitely played Brightwing before, if he has the yeah, Master Skin for it. A couple times, I think, it's, I think the estimate is like 70 games on average if you win about 50% of them to get a character to level 10. Okay. I think that's I think that's the average. I'll have to check that. But it's, oh my god, Hysterica going at very aggressive already. Grand PKT is the only one down here, and there's not much he can do about this except clear the wave. Hysterica just gonna clear this wave and get some early siege damage down. Yeah, uh, nice way to do this. I mean, with, with Brightwing and Arthas there, that's some good solid backup. But now Anubis coming in. There comes is the stun. Is that Nazibo gank squad? Ooh, that's a wow. Nazibo gank squad. Hysterica gets caught, but is only half health and is able to get out. Yeah. And with the shotgun, she cleared the way and actually got out of there. Last last minute save for Hysterica. 
Yeah, but and still. That is, that is actually a Nazi Bow Gang spot. I'm not sure if that's permanent. I think you'll probably swap with Grand PKT. But that's awesome. <laughs> I'd like to point that out. That's a great early game play. No one sees that coming. The other waves, though, once again, Chen winning his lane as he almost always does. Alistair and uh, Sokke doing pretty decent trades. Currently, Sokke is pushing a little better. This bot lane, though, is the one where interesting stuff is going to be happening. Yeah. Um, I like I like the uh, counterplay in top lane, Shen versus Tychus, because usually you would have Tychus just doing some incredible damage on those uh, on those towers. Yep, this is true. But Chen pretty much wins any lane he's put in, except maybe Stitches. I think Stitches can outlane a Chen. I'm not sure. Yeah, depends. I mean, if you have a little bit of a um, mobile mobile gang squad going around, so they always have to be cautious. I think he can. Probably win out against Chen. Yeah, quite possibly. So right now, Hysterica has actually been abandoned by his uh, partners as they have gone to take the mercenary, the Siege Giants. And because of that, we can see Hysterica is playing very, very safe indeed. Playing very Ooh. far behind his wall. Well, the 60 spotting this out, but he can't really do anything about Ufa's it. Ufa's on the Ufa. way. Ufa has been spotted by Hysterica. And we're not going to see all the 60 do anything. He's just grabbed the Watchtower. Gonna let them take it and move down to the spot lane to help clear it once those mercenaries do arrive. And there is the first tribute up in the top lane. Oh, top lane. No advantage for anyone right now. I mean, maybe well met. Maybe well met. They're uh, in a little bit of a better position to get it there. And they have Brightwing, and so that does help out quite a bit. By the way, I just realized no one picked Feldstad. Yeah, no one did pick Faustad because they were, I think, uh, El Nexa were trying to bait it out, but instead picked Nazibo as sort of a, a sort of a trick. Lose the front, tanking everything at the moment, gets grenaded out of his brew, so takes quite a bit of damage from Overdrive. Alistair gets locked down, but, but is able to jump away for, out of the storm. Ooh, no, no, he's in a little bit of trouble. Nice now trade. Hiroki comes peaks. back in there. Numbers and advantage is in favor of Well Met at the moment, and yep. that is going to let them grab this first tribute. Uh, that was a pretty nice move for them. Uh, they got the Siege Giants in bot lane, and now the Tribute, so um, basically uh, two for nil for them. <laughs> this is indeed the case. Alistair, going to be helping Grampy Kitty take care of this lane. Nazibo is headed back to this bot lane, is just going to try and help counter push this Sergeant Hammer, who's pretty, pretty much chilling down here the entire game, getting the work done. And we are going to see both teams begin starting on their Bruiser camps. Nomi and Hasselwobs for well met. Currently only Law vs XD for El Nexo, but Ufa is on the way to drop those helpful heals and a bit of extra damage. Ah. Ah. <laughs> you want to finish that, ah. <laughs> finish that sentence there? Oh, Ali just uh, gave me a pointer so we can see the um, see the unit info. While I have info? units selected. Oh, he gave me a little bit of a hint. People on stream will realize. I can see it. Uh, control shift O. Oh, okay. Yes, well, Matt set up a nice position here. They have the bruises in mid lane, but no, everyone out of El Nexo is coming back here as well. Wolf is XD reacting to the bruises and coming in there. But now this. Oh, that's a nice position for Well Met. Oh, nice bait. Makes them all reveal there. So now they know that Well Met is there, but in comes El Nexo. Luzifron does get caught. The cap has been cancelled by it well met because of this two pronged attack everyone in the game is currently here at this tribute Hasselhoff is going for a knock up from uh, Nubrak does hit very nice play there both teams nice position for well met they have I've everyone in that little around. funnel uh, yeah. the little funnel on the left side and they're gonna have I to think... move this up multi shot Oh, no. oh just in time, Haswell yeah. was able to grab it at the last second, but now El Nexo are moving in for the fight. Lucifer taking a lot of damage here. He is having to get out, but he's being overdriven. He had to brew, but he jumps in and does get taken down by Nomi. Nomi now hiding, trying to get the damage done. Hysterica is destroying Lol vs XD, driving him back. And El Nexo having serious trouble here. Nice zombie wall onto Haruka. He will get trapped. And Grappy KT does escape. It's now down to Alistair. He is able to vault. He will get out as well wow. as Vortex, who will retreat back to his main base. And well met, showing a bit of dominance when it comes to team fighting again. But an excellent retreat for El Nexo. I mean, they had three heroes, so incredibly low, but all of them retreated in different directions, and so they had uh, they could keep everyone alive in there. Some excellent decision making by El Nexo. 
Yeah. And that's two tributes for Well Met. So the next one is a big decider and El Nexo, they will have to go for that next yeah, one. The... And they can. I mean, they're level 10, they have their heroics up. Yeah, they have their heroics up. They're getting ready. To but try so does Well Met now. In Grand PKT, hovering around the area looking for his moment. Hasselobs is ready to come from above. Luciferon revealing himself. Alistair also there. And right yeah. now, El Nexo really, really far ahead. They almost grab it, but no, no me is going to prevent that. And now all five members of both teams are here. We're going to see the engagement. Luciferon diving in. Ult are ready for both teams. There's the Ancestral Spirit doing so much damage. Sorry, the Ravenous Spirit doing so much damage. It's onto Hysterica doing huge amounts of damage. Hiruke will go down. Hasselobs. Most of his Odin is already gone thanks to that. Vortex though is taking huge amounts of damage. Alistair is also on half health, but Hasselwops will go down. And that was immense damage from Eldex. So they get an ace! That's a team wipe. Wow. What a massive team fight for uh, Eldexo. That was just insane. That was Starting it out this with early the... point in the game. Getting a yeah. full team wipe like that is incredible. They're also playing it smart here. They were thinking about going for that golem, but decided, oh wait, the respawn timers are really, really short. This is a really bad idea. <laughs> so they've backed up. They're just going to take their other mercenaries, clear their waves and play it safe. But a great job by El Nexo there. And we, Ufa, the only person to go down, that ravenous spirit did so much damage. I need to stop calling it ancestral spirit. I keep doing it. Yeah, that, that ravenous spirit definitely was uh, insane on, on Sergeant Hammer. And also before, just uh, taking out uh, Hiruke there. Wow. And also a nice way to start it off with the Rain of Vengeance. Oh god. The Golem is currently going down to well met and El Nexo. Vortex is kind of on the way, but there's no way they're going to interrupt this. This will give well met a bit of an advantage when it comes to taking this tribute, or at least give them some kind of split push. There's the Oracle from Sokke. And this is basically going to prevent El Nexo, El Nexo from doing this. anything here. There's the Curse. Ooh. And now there's a Curse and a Golem. And here nice comes timing. the Sea Giants, though, to help clear this. Yeah, this is an incredibly nice timing for them. Uh, boss, Sea Giants, and the Curse at the same time. And only one level dis uh, disper discrepancy here. Yep, and they're bad. right now, we can see Well Met pushing with this Golem to try and get some extra damage done. And they're doing a fantastic job. El Nexo are here to try and defend. They're looking for a fight more than anything else. In comes no the trapped down there. There comes, to, there comes the her uh, heroic. And Nomi and trapped Roll. again. Ravenous Spirit, sorry. Ravenous Spirit going to be able to take down Hysterica if he doesn't get away. But the, the range, they were able to run out of range a bit. But down goes Sokke flying majestically through the air. Hasselobs is going to be able to back out. Nope, in comes Chen. Chen is continuing to push. Hasselobs has been healed pretty much to full here, and Chen's going to have to get out of there. He's in a really bad position, able to jump over the wall and keep himself alive. In the meantime, the Golem did just kill a fort. Yep, and so uh, the fort was taken out. Golem is still up, but um, the curse is almost over. Only two seconds remaining, so it's not going to do too much more damage. Yeah, will Forrest and Alexa are back in the middle, though. Yeah, they're all backing up to heal or just healing up themselves. They're clearing their waves because that was a great push by Well Met. They're still a level behind though, even though they've taken down some forts. This does mean that if El Nexo can start taking down some forts of their own, that XP boost will get them significantly further ahead than yep. Well Met. So Well Met needs to use the control they have now and just push it hard. They need to stay ahead. They need to get further ahead and use any advantage they can. Yeah, that's the thing. If you get these, um, if these, if you get the map objectives early on, and well met, they did a really good job here. I mean, um, doing a lot better in the in the map objectives game than the previous games. Yeah, someone brought up a very good point there. Well met. Uh, we're seeing Heruke there taking blink heal against Nazibo, where Emerald Wind can displace him and cancel his ult. Hmm. Interesting. There's, there's Oracle from Sokke. Very nice. Able to drive back. He's also taking the increased range this time rather than the mana regen like he did last time. Increased range, going to be allowing him to harass this comp from afar. And El Nexo just ho hovering around their golem right now, but they need to leave it because their mid fort is under serious duress right now and they're going to have to clear it. Yeah, but then again, this is just XP catching up uh, for, for Wilmet. They really need to win a team fight in order to um, to get on top here. This is true, and they're still level behind, which is very difficult. And now, 
We're seeing El Nexo are going to get themselves even further ahead in XP, and they're going to take down their first fort without the help of any without the help of any mercenaries and no curse. And that is their first fort, and that's going to get them even further ahead. That's almost a full level ahead now. In fact, that is exactly a full level ahead. Um, that's the level 16 talents. They go for stone skin on the Zebo, combination attack on Chen. Uh, nothing chosen yet for Uther. Then we have Execution on Valor, Epicenter on Anubarak. So, and nice so ways to disrupt and of course stay alive uh, for N Nazebo. Yep, and for Valor, that is an incredible talent pick. Execution yep. when you have people like Anubarak for knockup, Chen for the root. And not to mention, the most important thing, you're going multi-shot build, meaning you have frost shot. It means you're slowing enemies for two seconds, meaning you're going to be getting a 40% damage increase for the entire two seconds. And through all those auto attacks, you'll be reducing your cooldowns thanks to battle momentum. It's a very, very good synergy build for just synergizing with yourself. And someone also pointed out that uh, Tychus didn't, uh, didn't choose the grenade range build here. Mm. So that no also would have been very nice, they're just not yep. countering Nazibo at all, but they're having El Nexo having to be here because Well Met, reacting perfectly, are just going to try and push while El, while El Nexo is busy on the other side of the map. They're now going to back up because El Nexo have come back to the homeowner's home, get out. Sokke having to run away, Alistair did slow him and is just continuing to give chase right now. There we go, slowing him oh. again. Is they just able to continue chasing like this, but Sokke finally having the chance to mount up and get out of there. Next tribute should be spawning quite soon. But there's a they golem to react in the, to the boss lane. though. And yeah, there's a golem in the bot lane and there's two giants in the top lane. El Vortex dealing with those giants and the minion wave. Whereas well met, the golem did die itself. But they're just gonna clear the minion wave down there as well. Just for that extra XP and to prevent their tower give their towers some time to replenish ammo. And there is the next tribute. A lot oh, of pigs next saying tribute. Them away. Yeah, next tribute. <laughs> they already <laughs> have two on their hands. Way. So this will be the final one for El Nexo. Well, Matt needs Here to stop come. this. There's Oracle. Oracle's so good. There's the storm. Oh, Vortex, Vortex needs to be stopped. Get it. They can't get near enough in time. There it is. There's the curse for El Nexo. And this is going to be the fight. And Vortex doing all his damage he can. And there's the Ravenous Spirit follow-up. It's going to chase Nomi. Nomi's actually going to be able to get out there. So he's changing it onto Hysterica. And Sokke having to back out. His ultimate is up. It's just Hasuob now doing the damage. Hysterica does a lot of damage too. And no one died. Yeah, a good sustain out of Wellmet. They actually um, had a nice move here where Nomi just backed off the Revenant Spirit. And c the Revenant Spirit basically just completely wasted on uh, onto Nomi. Which allowed them to stay alive, but they weren't able to really uh, catch anyone off guard though. So let's see. We this have El Nexo going side. for the boss. We have the level 16 talents for uh, for Will Met as well. We have triple stone skin. Wow. That might be helping to keeping them alive here. And El Nexo so. raiding the Bruiser Camp. <laughs> they do this so often. They just charge straight in just like this is ours now. Thanks for taking it. And then leave. They do this almost every game. It is hilarious to see. I am a huge fan. And now they're going to be moving in. Use their curse advantage to take this boss. Yeah, they're going to take the boss. It's going to put on some tremendous pressure on the top lane. And, well, Matt's still having to react to the bruisers. So just now getting in there. And it's too late. Boss has been taken. Can you imagine if you could Merc Lord that thing? <laughs> and there we go. Another fort down. El Nexo doing a great job. It isn't the fort count is now completely even, and El Nexo have just under a level worth of advantage. And they are going to be moving down to their bot lane or their bottom jungle to take those bruiser camps. Yeah. Well, Matt needs to clear this boss though before it does any serious damage on these gates. I think they will, and we'll also reach level 18 soon. So it's still pretty even, but. After seeing those team fights, wow, it's it's incredibly hard for Wilmet to pull this off. Yeah, this is true. I'm just having a look at some of the stats here. 26k healing from Brightwing, 21 from Ufa, and I like what they're doing here. They're just waiting to take those bruise camps. Just gonna let Lol vs XD take it, get them buffed. Yeah, sometimes you just gotta have the patience. Something that you unfortunately do not get in solo queue. Yeah, having a look here, uh, just having a look at the hero damage, 25k from Valor, 23 from Nazibo, but the rest of the team falling a bit short, 12k, 14k, 7k, 
Whereas if we look on the other side, it's not going to matter in a second because here comes the fight. And the Nubrak getting a lot of CC down there to Shrink Ray onto someone. I'm pretty sure that just, that's what oh, just happened. Oh, Lucifer caught off the position, but he still has his rogue up. He's and using. we'll pop that. Yep. There we go, it's popped. Positioning himself, there we go. Amazing positioning from Nazibo. But nice knockback from Hammer over the wall, cancelling it, but it's too late. Two players already died. It's about to be free. Nomi goes down, Hammer and Hasuwalt are trying to escape. Vortex is trying to body block Hasuwalt, but he might actually die here. As Alistair also being dropped very low, Hasuwalt is having to flee for his life, but he goes down. Only person to survive is Hammer, who is having to be an El Nexo dominating that fight again. Nice reactions from Hammer to cancel the Nazibar ultimate by knocking him up from over the wall, but it was far too late at that point. Yeah. Hammer really tried to save um, Tychus there, but uh, in the end couldn't quite make it work. It, I mean, with five heroes against two. That's not gonna help. That's not gonna help. And this is the first keep for El Nexo. And they're wisely backing off. Only uh, five seconds remaining here on Tassada and Brightwing. Yeah, backing up. They're going to steal these mercenaries, grab them for themselves with the Merc Lord, get some push started on that bottom lane, while Ufa already heading up to grab this tribute. And he's going to be able to get it with almost zero pro zero contest, because, as we can see, will Met have to defend. Yep, excellent timing here. Always nice to grab that free tribute. And they're in a good spot to go for their boss as well, but I think not going to go for that just yet. Is that just backing off and waiting for where I'm at? Possibly lure him into that fight. Because they know that uh, they're definitely going to go for the boss. Yep, this is true. And level 20 talents are up. Yep, and we have the upgrade to the Ravenous Spirit. That's an extra 50% uh, range and 30% movement speed. Great wow. for chasing. They already had trouble dealing with the range on Nazibo. <laughs> exactly, so now we can just stand further back and still kill them. Yeah. Storm of Vengeance increased the number of shots from uh, from Rain of Vengeance because Vala hasn't actually died that much. How many times has she died? Uh, I'm trying to bring, I'm trying to remember what tab it is for death. Oh, I found the APM tab. Okay. There we go. Vala has not died yet. Yeah, I'm just, I just Ooh. found the APM tab. Ufa has 300 has 348 current APM. Oh, Hysterica completely out of position, and there we go. Body blocked and taken out swiftly. Yeah, very, very nice there. Combination attack, complete destroying him. The root, and then, like you said, the body blocks, completely wiping him out. Lover 6D heading into this bot lane with the golem, gonna help it push down here. And only two resurgences on the side of Eldexo because they don't need them. It's only on the warriors where they've grabbed them because everyone else can just escape and tank this. And they are now pushing hard. Wow, Chen, really aggressive here. Be a bit more careful there. Your team is not ready for this push, Chen. Looking for his opportunity, and there he goes, they're onto the core, they're just going to dive this. Alistair is microing back the Raid of Vengeance though, so much damage. There is the Ravenous Spirit onto the core, just completely ignoring it. Sokka is trying to kill him, but it's not working. There, oh, there's nice Divine Hurricane, hurricane as well. He does not care, and El Nexo are just completely ignoring the enemy team of well met, and they're just going to take out the core. And yep. El Nexo move on to the semi-finals to play against over 9,000 to win a place in Heroes <laughs> Premier League Season 2. Yeah, very much so. Um, El Nexo, just on top of everything here. And this is something you can pull off if you're two levels ahead. Just ignore all hero damage, go straight for the core, um, put up oh, some I'm massive... sorry, were you trying to s tell me something? I was too busy destroying your core. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly what happened.